Hello everyone. We'd like to welcome our new sponsor, Metallic Dice Games. They sent us a envelope full of dice to try out and that we will be giving some of these away on a future show. And if you act now and you go through, you can get a 10% discount on all your dice orders by using the code SMSDICE10 when you check out and you get 10% off. Uh, let's see what we got here. We got Misfits Dice. Boom. We've got uh, these 60 millimeter metal poly dice. Rainbow. Boom. Look at those. And let's see what else we have in here. Boom. Boom. We have the handmade sharp resin dice. This really cool blue color. Boom. If you like dice and you like video or you like dice and you like playing role playing games, then you need to get a hold of Metallic Dice Games. And you can find them on the internet. And like I said, use the code when checking out SMSDICE10. You get 10% off all your orders. Um, and just tell them, uh, you know, Group Therapy TV, Sci, Sci Fridays, and Saturday Morning Serial sent you. So you can get these cool ass dice. And I think I'm going to open this one. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. This is the mystery poly bag. You can get a poly ba a bag of mystery metal dice. And yeah, look at that. Look at that. I can't just can't really show it to you on film. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Boom. All metal dice. That is awesome. So Check out our sponsors, and uh, you can watch our show next. Later. All right, welcome to today's episode of the Group Therapy Podcast. Today we have Mikey Sever. Mikey, tell us about yourself. I have no it's idea. It's just lame, man. I can't handle, you know, Zoom. It's new technology. They, they're they not updating enough, you know. The pandemic, everybody started using it. And they weren't ready, you know. <laughs> oh. They weren't ready for their for their close-up. No. Mine, I, and I did all the Zooms, or I just started doing Zooms while I did the, 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 um, during the pandemic. So, all right, here we go. Welcome to today's episode of the Group Therapy Podcast. Today, we have Mikey Seva. Tell us about yourself, Mikey. Did you say my name right? I can't hear because it's going in and out. Oh, How did yes, you I say did. it? Yes, I did. I so, so, said your name, Mikey Sever. It's Severe. Severe. Oh, my bad. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, no, sorry, 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 sorry. No, it's okay. Nobody gets it right. It's an Anglicanization, Anglicanization of French. So <laughs> nobody knows it. It's like severe. You're like, what is your name? It's severe. Is it Sevier? I don't know. <laughs> is it is it Seaver? I'm like, it's definitely not Seaver. Mike Seaver is the guy on the growing page. You know, <laughs> Mike Severe. But whatever. Uh, tell you about myself? Yes. That's weird. Yes. You want to know about me? This guy? That's stupid. Who am I? No one. <laughs> Just uh, your average horror host and uh, mask maker and horror uh, celebrity and greatest monster man of all time who's yes. ever been, you know, alive or dead, thank goodness. <laughs> At least, the, you know, that's what my press material says anyway. If I had press material. <laughs> uh, Mikey Sabir, how you doing, Paul Lee? Nice to meet you, right? Yes. I finally get to meet you. Now, finally. Oh, gosh. It's been like 500 years. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> I know I have. On uh, Tinder hooks, whatever they say. Have you ever seen a Tinder hook before? No. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> when you're going to hold on get ready for this one well i don't know what that means it's stupid but uh yeah so no i'm very happy to be here it's nice to meet hey, hey paulie does anybody call you paulie like that or they just call you paul me does paul or uh, uh my my one buddy calls me the general um and i knew the admiral once did you know him the admiral. did you guys work together did you work no, with the I admiral didn't, i didn't work with admiral lee um I, i've worked oh. with ug i've worked with home uh, <laughs> uh we, we uh we used to have those old, guys yeah my, my my wife was wanted to name our daughter heaven if we ever had a daughter i was like not with my last name I was like, she'd have two opportunities for a star or stripper. I was like, we'd never yeah, have a daughter no, named Heavenly. It, those are really the only options. Yeah, that's, that would be unfortunate. Just, but, she, you know, we'd all know who she was in any any event. I said, yeah, my, my last name. This is way you get to go to the conventions and oh. not her. There you go. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I finally got to go to my first convention as a guest recently. And that was weird. So, <laughs> yeah. Did they invite you? Yeah, got invited in the the because I I was doing interviews like this, and I got invited as the interviewer and then as my cartoon uh, host, and then I finally because everybody had been asking, um, because it all started out as a joke. I was going to do a horror host, and I was like, man, there's really good horror host out there, and I don't want to be, <laughs> and everybody's like, no, do it, do it, and I was like. And I actually talked my wife into being one of my host with me, and we did a Halloween episode, and she loved it. <laughs> I, I love it. That's great. You guys had big fun. Yeah. Oh, we had a blast. So, and and now I've got the doctor. It's the doctor Edgar Shelley Lovecraft, PhD, not MD. Uh, <laughs> and then I got Captain Cartoon. Good name. Yeah. And. Um, She's she's the witch. Do you wear makeup for either? No. I hope you wear makeup at least for the horror guy. Come I, on. I, I know I should. Um, it's Paul. It's you're fun. really disappointing me here. <laughs> we got it. We got enough horror hosts that don't wear makeup. All right. Come on. Yeah. I, I put I, a wig. Do, do something. I um. I, I'm slowly evolving it because I wasn't sure where I was going to go with it. Because at one point he was going to be like the pipe smoking. Uh, with the tweed jacket and stuff like that, and um, then I, I like didn't like that. that. Then right, I have the it... pads, the pads on the elbows. Yeah, yeah, the whole nine yards. So now I have a whole thing going across all my different shows, and we talk about parallel universes. So each one of my characters is a character from another universe. <laughs> oh, that's cool! It's you in a different universe. Yeah. And actually, I got a friend who's coming in, and she's going to play a parallel universe of, version of me, but it's a girl. So she's going to be Captain Cartoon from another universe, and it's going to be going to wear the hat, uh, the robe, and the 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 the, the clutch t shirt, and it's all and it's never going to be said through the entire episode why I'm not there. She's going to act like me through the entire episode. So, <laughs> oh, that's good, yeah. and that takes a lot of pressure off of you then. Yeah. I I because you I don't, don't you know have, I, I, uh, to have a period or anything like that or get yeah, no. or get ogled by the men. <laughs> I got hit on at the gym the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Did so. it make you feel really buff? Y you know what? I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. It feel kind of good because because uh, you know when somebody hits on you at the gym, you just look around and go, me. <laughs> There's buff guys over this here. Guy? I'm not buff. Yeah, exactly. You're just like, what the hell? So. Are you one of those guys who 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 pumps your Nautilus or whatever and goes? Ooh! Do you make funny noises or no? I I probably do, but I put my headphones in, so I try to avoid making noises. <laughs> but no, I'm quiet. I, I knew a guy once. I knew a guy once who was who was a conductor, and he used to run on the treadmills with his his earbuds in, and he would literally conduct. While he was running like this, like I guess I don't know. People thought he was insane or whatever. He was a little bit, you know. Conductors are weird. Yeah, we. Uh, I get on the treadmill and just. Well, I get on the elliptical. I'm elliptical guy, so. 
Now, know. what is that? That's like that's like non shocking, yeah. like running in place or something. It, it's got it's these, not really yeah, and then you biking, do the, but it's not really running yeah. either. It, it's because my my knees are are kind of buggered, so I tend to if yeah. I have to run on the treadmill, it'll kill my knees after a while. Uh, but if I get on the elliptical, it's a smooth motion, so I don't have the pain in my knees. So. Is that like spinning or spinning is the elliptical without the, the spinning steep is the uh, is the exercise bike? I thought I, I'm not 100 percent on that. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, OK. It's just like going as fast as you can. Yeah, it's going up or you like or you like you like get way up and you you pedal real fast. And then you go like in it. I don't know. I've never been to a class. Oh, I just, I, yeah, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't been to the gym since 1935, you know, <laughs> since they had like those medicine ball things. But you had to go and you had to wear the, uh, you know, like the singlet, <laughs> yeah, the stripes, oh my God. like Pugsley, like Pugsley Adams is wrestling. That's that was my outfit. So I haven't done it since then. But <laughs> yeah, I know. I I just go in my. Uh... I, I hear it's a really nice place. They have like those. Uh, they serve meatballs. What do they have a commissary or anything like that? Uh no, it's communal it's showers. Pl- it's a Planet Fitness. It does have showers. Um but okay but no but no 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 salad bar no no it's 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 the to it's, me, the, it's like i would you know if i'm gonna go to the gym i want to get a bite to eat have some juice you know some meatballs little meatballs made out of horse meat like <laughs> ikea and then you take them into the shower take your balls into the shower <laughs> you know pop a few do your hair a little oh, shampoo yeah. a little blow dry no, it's, Say hi uh, to the restroom attendant. Do they have those? It's like a no. club? No, 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 no restroom attendant. No, uh, they do have showers. Uh, they what do a racket have... that is! You just pay. You just pay your dues, and then you hurt yourself. I pay my Basically. dues. I go in. I work out. And I go home. Yeah, that's like people go. You I go home, with... and then you try to kill yourself with a brownie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> was that on this? Was that on this one, or was that the last one? I don't even remember. Were we talking about it on this version of the show, or the no, other? No, no, we weren't. We were talking about it before. Yeah. By the way, uh, before we we recorded, uh, I almost died by eating a brownie, <laughs> which is a good way to go. Yeah, yeah. it's not bad. Yeah, there, you there's can a do lot worse ways I could have went before. <laughs> One of those confetti cake cupcakes. That would be worse. Those things are. Oh, oh. I can only handle so many colors in my icing, you know. It's... Gross. Did I talk about who I am yet? A, a little Does bit. It matter. Yeah. Your mask maker. I'm a hard host, host, and I make I make masks too. I make monster masks. I have a company that makes monster masks, and I go on YouTube and on various social media, and I wear makeup. Yeah, and I do horror hosting things, and uh, you know, every now and then I host a movie, and that's nice. I do like Halloween specials, or go- what we call Goosey Night specials. Where I grew up as a kid, we called it Goosey Night. That was the night before Halloween, you know. Some people call it Cabbage Night. That smells. Some people call it Hell Night. I rather like that one. Mischief Night. Some people call it Mischief Night. But I like to do Goosey Night. Uh, specials because everybody has uh, halloween specials nobody has goosey night specials you know what i mean oh yeah see i i thought about you put some change of mind to be this the saw wind special but we didn't we, we were lazy we just called it the halloween special <laughs> right that would be a good one yeah. saw who saw win. Saw who nobody even knows how to say that word anymore sam i grew up my whole life thinking it was sam hain yeah i was like sammy Oh, Sammy? You mean Sam, that guy over there? But uh, now they're like, oh, it's Sal. How do you say it? Sal Win. Sal Win. Sal Win, it's it like Celtic. Know. So. Isn't that like a dead language? Who still speaks Celtic? You got to go to Ireland to figure out how to say that word, right? Oh, well, it's better than what? Those are what my Welsh. people back in the day. Yeah. It's like Welsh. If you go back, if you go back far, far, far enough, you know, my people knew how to say that word. At least some of them, half of them, that half over there. Uh, uh, I watched the thing the other this day. Half was busy making meatballs or something. <laughs> they were talking about how far you could go back into the past and still understand what people were saying, and it's not that far back. <laughs> 
No, it's really not because, you know, like I didn't even know what my grandparents were saying half of the time. But, you know, I think that's just because I was weird. <laughs> I was like, who? Who's Benny Goodman? Who's Benny that? Goodman? Oh, my God. Who's my... Duke Ellington? Well, he was the Duke of what? <laughs> oh, we uh, I, I got I got lucky though. My my uh, my grandpa was the one that took me to go see uh um like monster movies downtown at the little theater. So I got I got lucky on yeah. that one. And then uh, did you I go to the see old... old ones or did you or first first run? Uh, no, because because every once in a while on Saturday afternoons they'd have the old ones, so they'd have old black and white ones. Um. But I also, Sweet. he took me to go see movies that were completely inappropriate for a little kid. I mean, he, t- he took me to go see Conan when I was like, what, eight? So, <laughs> yeah. I, see, I think that's perfect. I saw Conan when I was eight and it scared the crap out of me. It was I great. Conan. I still love Conan. I watch that movie. Was the first Conan the one with James Earl Jones or was that the yeah. second one? That's the first one with James Earl Jones. Yeah. That's Conan the Barbarian yeah, that's and great. Conan the Destroyer is the one with uh, Wilt Chamberlain and. Uh, uh, Andre the Giant. And Andre the Giant and uh, Grace Jones. Yes, oh, Grace no. Jones. Yes, yes, yes. That... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. She can yeah. have one too. That's with that's with Dagon. Is that the one with Dagon? Yeah. I want to do a sculpture of him. Only like better. Yeah, because that, that was... don't get me wrong, he looks he looks great in the movie. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Oh, that was Andre inside that costume, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah, somebody told me that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think Andre's in it twice, I believe. He's he's both he's the the at the end and I think he's in the middle somewhere. But he's in costume. Right. Sometimes. He's the guy who's like, anybody wanna be in it? Yeah. I met I met Andre the Giant when I was like twelve years old and he was like <laughs> He's like, Hello little man. He's up there. <laughs> Hello tiny person. He like he like he's not like, really bad guy. You know, people go up there and like take little kids and do that to their head. They're like taking your yeah. hand and putting it on like a toddler's head. He's like, no. right? <laughs> you tiny little thing. Like, I, um, I, had a friend, <laughs> I had a friend who thought that that Hulk Hogan's name was Hull Kogan. Hulk Hogan. Hulk She'd be like, Waka. she's like, yeah, you remember like the the and with the wrestling with Hulk Hogan. <laughs> so Julie, I think it's Hulk Hogan. Oh. Oh, that that's funny though. That's that's uh that's that's a good way to to yeah, I can see that. My wife's texting me. Um better oh. be important. No, no, it's it's literally like uh, went to Kroger's. Be home soon. <laughs> <laughs> cool. She, she got some all... of those two by those two by brownie things that I choked on. We're out. She she bought those yesterday. <laughs> she bought those at Sam's Club. Like I I and I almost never eat them either. And it was one of them ones where you know I'm kind of hungry. It was getting late in the day. I. We hadn't taken off yet because I don't close my shop till eight on on Saturdays, and this is I think like five yeah. o'clock in the afternoon. So it's like I'll eat a brownie, and I ate a brownie and it almost <laughs> killed me. So <laughs> and you never eat them again. No, I've eaten two of them because I will show those brownies. You don't screw with me because I will eat you. <laughs> I will. Do not start with me, pal. I will eat you. Yes. <laughs> what is it that, that 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 which doesn't kill me only makes me stronger so <laughs> or something yeah so it was like uh was it, it only turns your stool black <laughs> that which does not kill you only comes out the wrong end into the garbage <laughs> pail so what did you eat after you puked up your brownie i just uh, had some quinoa i just no. made a little quinoa it takes five minutes you know it's healthy <laughs> and it's so good no, I had something completely inappropriately unhealthy for me. Went to Cracker Barrel and got a chicken fried, a, a country fried steak and eggs. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah. That's good, actually. I, would, I like chicken fried. Oh, chicken fried anything. Yeah. Have you ever tried chicken fried chicken? The, the double fried chicken? Or just chicken fried? Yeah. 
I don't know what double fried even means. It's like it's black when it comes out. No, it's um, it's fried, then like battered and fried again. So it's like See, double... that, that seems like a little bit much. It's double crispy. I, it's like super crispy. So, <laughs> but ah, for yeah. all those people who didn't think that uh, fried chicken was crispy enough, you know, honey, I still have all my teeth. I'd like to break a few teeth on this. <laughs> On this chicken. Can we make it crisp? Can we do that? Can we just do that? Oh, you when that? I moved to the South, I live, I, I'm from, I'm from New Jersey, but I live in North Carolina now. And the first time <clears throat> I went out to breakfast down here, I went to some place called like, I don't know what it was, like the, uh, the s slave quarters, the mansion, I don't know, <laughs> something, something inappropriate and awful. And I was like, oh Jesus, I'm in the South now. And I got, they, I looked on the menu and it was like, biscuits and gravy and two eggs any style and country fried steak or chicken and your choice of potatoes or toast or sausage or something like that and i was like all at the same time like that was one thing that you could get on the menu and i said this has been going on in the South because in the North, they make you choose. You know what I mean? And then you order a juice and it's like this yep. big, you know? So it's, I was like, oh God, well, this is like the one good thing apparently about moving the South to the South. You can kill yourself every morning if you want. I, I, I got country fried steak, uh, over easy eggs, uh, biscuits and gravy, bacon, and fried apples. That was my dinner last night. And then you got angina. And then you got a heart attack. And then you you got your arteries hardened. Oh. I, I, yeah, yeah, I went to uh, I went to the Cracker Barrel and I got my barrels cracked. <laughs> oh my! God. And it's the worst thing ever for you. And I was so hungry for for biscuits and gravy last night. I was like, yeah, hey, and they give you a country fried steak with that. So I'll take all of that. I'll take all that. I want to go to Cracker Barrel and just like, I want to like sit in the little store area. I'm like, can I just sit on this rocking chair? I don't need to be seated over there, do I? Can I just hang out over here with like all the goods or in the front? Can you bring it to me out here in the rocking chair? I want to feel authentic. I don't need to hang out with those people. They spit. Surprises me because they got, they got all that stuff out front. They got the rocking chairs. They have the big checkerboards and all that stuff the fact that they don't bring food outside is surprising so yeah it's weird right they're lazy <laughs> i think they're lazy i'm against them yeah. they're the chain they had, and then they had ray guns in the store i was like oh cool ray gun i don't know what that has to do with like old country kind of thing but like it was cool Hey, I bought my I bought my wife a copy of Prince's Purple Rain on picture vinyl there. So <laughs> now Prince loved a Cracker Barrel. <laughs> Prince was a big Prince fan of Cracker Barrel. Good. So I had to get a copy of Purple Rain <laughs> on picture vinyl. He's like, we're going, we're going to Cracker Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> Prince, uh, my friend, uh, Prince, you know, Prince like would, um, would kind of, uh, after a show, he'd play a show for like four hours mm -hmm. and then he'd like go to whatever random bar and it was like a secret, you know, some or some random club or something like that and play for another four hours until like, you know, four or five in the morning or something like that. Well, one night he, he showed up at this bar that my friend just happened to be at and my friend was like in the back, you know, like in the good table, like in the back in the corner where it's like, you know, uh, shadowy or whatever. Yeah. And they like, and all these people came, these like, I guess they were like bodyguards came and like kind of moved him out of the seat because it's relatively easy to move. So they just got him out there and like, and Prince like kind of moved in. And like somehow my friend like kind of like managed to get back to Prince and like, you know, sat down next to him, you know, like on the corner or whatever of the, of the seat. I imagine it's like, you know, one of those like booths or something, those round U-shaped yeah. booths. And he's like, and he's like sitting there next to Prince. And he's like, he's like, oh, I I, uh, I like your shoes. Uh, where did you buy them? And Prince said, I had them made. And then they like moved my friend out of there again. That was it. 
That's my Prince story. That's the closest I ever got to Prince. <laughs> At one point in my in my twenties, I realized I will never be as talented as Prince, and I was, and that was crushing. That was crushing. I was trying to hit the high notes from Bat Dance, and I was like, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I could do it when I was eleven. <laughs> How come I can't sing this note anymore? Yeah, he did the uh, what the Bobby Brady where you're sitting there, na 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 na. <laughs> my voice changed at 25 <laughs> started breaking I was sitting there talking and then about... I asked for pork chops and applesauce pork chops and applesauce I was talking to one of my buddies the other day and also my voice is cracked I'm like what am I a 15 year old boy what the hell <laughs> yes well they didn't tell you about second puberty huh and second puberty would suck <laughs> Oh, okay. happens right around your your uh, your age, you know. Yeah. I couldn't hormones. Imagine. Oh my god, I could. Yeah, well, now now it's the anti hormones because you're going through all this stuff where you start losing everything. You're losing the testosterone, yeah. and the estrogen comes around and has to screw up you watching movies from now on. So, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I cry at the end of everything anyway. Well, me and my buddy were you know, talking the, about. Uh, Every every year, remember the the uh, the Flintstones Fruity Pebbles commercial? Yeah, that one always makes me cry. Because <laughs> Barney gives Fred the Fruity Pebbles. Yeah. Is oh it... no, Fred gives. Bo- yep. Oh. And Santa reminds Fred, he's like, "Tis the season to be sharing, Fred." And he's Fred's like, like, "Happy Christmas, pal." And Barney's like, "Oh, Fred." And I'm just, I was just. Like, it's so nice. <laughs> Screaming. Yeah, it's 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 funny. I was like, I remember when you could just you'd be a hard ass and you could watch whatever you wanted to do and nothing. Now it's like I'm getting older. It's like ah, yep. I'm not to see here. <laughs> You're like that is so sad. He's gonna. He's Jenny Agner loves him so much. And he got shot. <laughs> David is still a werewolf. I thought maybe he would recognize her for a second. And they shot him and now he's dead. And oh. now she's a nun. She's <laughs> delivering babies and she's a nun because her love, her one true love died as a werewolf. Yeah. Oh my God. It's sad. It is sad. That's a, that's a it's a really tragic movie, man. <laughs> I I got lucky. I got to interview him relatively recently, David Naughton. That was uh that was fun. Was he awesome? Uh, he was a little like I wouldn't say he was bad or was... nothing. I'm not going to say anything, but you know. He... He knows that he's a convention he guy it. now. I don't. I don't want to say, be mean or nothing like that. But he knows he's a convention guy now. And uh, we were sitting there making fun. I was like, "Yeah, I was like, you know, you were, you were, you were in American Werewolf One and stuff like that." He goes, "Yeah." He goes, "I never thought forty years." He goes, "In forty years, I'll be at another con and I'll be almost a hundred. You'll be a hundred years old, and I'll still be signing American Werewolf and stuff." Dude, it's better than I'm a pepper. You're a pepper. Yo. I never even got my Dr. Pepper endorsement deal. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you're doing fine. Yes. <laughs> and fun- P.S. Making it. <laughs> making it is like probably the greatest disco song of all time. Besides, I feel real. I feel real. <laughs> I feel real. I feel real. I'll just repeat. Hey, I'm not going to stand and alive. Making it like, is like the epitome of disco because it wasn't even a real song. They're like, Let's make a show and a, a song at the same time. It's like, you know, it's like it, it's basically, you know, from the back of a cereal box or something. You can probably buy it on, on uh, Sugar Smacks. <laughs> you get those little peel out 45. The flexi disc, I mean. That you cut, cut out of the box. It's a 45 and you can put it on your stereo back in the day. Thank you. That's exactly what I was talking about. I did not have the words. Thank you for helping me. Yeah. Yeah. It's making a cereal with David Naughton. It's yeah. delicious. 
and you, it's and all it, about uh, this this young, a nice young Jewish boy from the Italian neighborhood who you know kind of looks a little bit like John Travolta, maybe if you squint, <laughs> but he sure does love disco, and he can sing, and he's a werewolf. You know, it's good. Oh, yeah. He likes Dr Pepper. It's a good thing. <laughs> I loved I love David Nothing. He he's, he was a fun interview, but like I said, he was a little. I wouldn't say standoffish, but he was. You can see he wasn't real happy to be there. I guess. Yeah, I mean, conventions can be kind of a drag, but you know. Yeah. It's like have you know, drink your Red Bull, whatever. Do your five minute energy, and go. This is what you do now. Enjoy it. It's not Shakespeare. It's not John Landis. Well, it's not Pepper. No, nope. you're not the Pepper. <laughs> You're not a pet anymore, David. It, it's it's what do they say when people stop? You know that he he's seventy nine years old. Can you believe that he's seventy nine? He's one hundred and thirty seven years old, David Naughton. He's actually a werewolf. That's why he... he probably just wanted to take a nap. Yeah. He's actually a werewolf. That's why he's still alive. Yeah, that's why That's why the special effects look so good. <laughs> he's a little gray. A little gray at the temple. Just the Coleman. The Coleman stuff. You just put that little gray at the temple. So. Oh, my. Right. That, just a little toothbrush full. That's all you need. That's why Rick Baker won. He won the Oscar that year. Yeah, because they had an actual werewolf on set. So. He was a real werewolf. I feel real. Oh, no. Making it. This time in love, I'm taking it. And it was in Meatballs. No more. No, no it was in Meatballs, wasn't it? it? Oh, it was great in Meatballs, too. What a great what a great use of making it. Oh Those guys, the company, the record, the record company was like, we're gonna, we're gonna milk this making it single for all it's worth. It's the best thing on the Meatball soundtrack. Well, almost the best thing. Oh, man. It's been so long since I've listened to the Meatball soundtrack. I couldn't tell you what was on there. You're not listening to it every day? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure Kenny Loggins is probably on it because Kenny Loggins was on every soundtrack from like. He was on everything. Yeah, since 1970, like 1990. You get a movie and Kenny Loggins it is in that soundtrack somewhere. Yeah, he got a lot of work from that. Yep. Messina was like, see you later. And Kenny Loggins was like, I don't even care, man. I'm doing I'm doing soundtracks. Right. I got Caddyshack lined up. I got what? Cocoon? Was he did he what? do Cocoon? Probably right. Uh did he, he do what? Wraith? I bet he was on the Wraith oh, soundtrack. Yeah, mm -hmm. Footloose and Charlie Sheen. Uh, um really Footloose, of course. <laughs> Hi, now that it's just you and me, I want to talk to you about sex. If you're having sex, like, use a condom, okay? And if you're not, like, just don't do it. And tell your friends. <laughs> and tell them I said so. <laughs> ah, sorry about that. It's okay, I just had a little PSA while you were gone. Had a PSA. <laughs> that I won't see until I watch this back again and do the editing. So <laughs> it wasn't any good. It's an it's an old joke I stole from Whoopi Goldberg from 1985. Ah, which one was it? When she was funny. <laughs> there was a time people forget. Hey, remember she did a movie with a giant talking Tyrannosaurus Rex that was a cop. <laughs> what was it called, Teddy Rex? Uh, Theodore Rex. Theodore Rex. Yep. Yeah, so good. That was a good. That was a good movie. It made a lot of sense, right? Yeah. Made a lot of money. It was really big at the box office. That was. It's like, it was like Batman, Theodore Rex for a little while. Yep. And then the Flintstones right under that. They they they, they were competing for number one. For, for yeah. <laughs> they were neck and neck. Neck and neck. And then and then Get Tammy out of here, and the T Rex. And Tammy and the T-Rex came out with a, a young, uh, um, oh, God, Denise, uh, Denise Richards, where she, she, her boyfriend gets stuck in the, uh, 
the the inside the giant animatronic dinosaur or his spirit was right uh, was that like a uh, a corman picture or no am no, i thinking of carnosaur. carnosaur yeah tammy oh. the t-rex was um I, it actually i want to say had a budget too but it was uh i know shout factory has it now but and of course my phone's gonna run like crap um it, it bombed because they went from it was supposed to be a like R-rated horror movie to basically mm -hmm. they tried to make it a, 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 a almost a kids movie. Tammy and the so it is. 1994. <laughs> uh, it was PG-13 when it I came out. I had no idea. What... <laughs> oh yeah, it had a, it had a young Paul Walker in it too. So they hit it right in the middle. And the 13-year-olds loved it. They were like, this is perfect. This is what I've been looking for. I think I saw that when it came out on DVD. Because our VHS back then. It never came to the theater. Oh, man. Did I lose you? Denise Richards. Uh, oh, Denise Richards, the best... Uh, um, uh, it's like if something was direct to video you knew that it was like just crap and now you know 90 percent of everything that isn't that is made never goes to theater 98 percent, forget it yeah it's it, the only it, things that go to the theater are, are disney movies just go ahead just 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 talk just say something yeah i'm gonna be able to I'm, use this later i'll just i'll just pretend that i can hear you <laughs> no i can hear you now you're okay oh my god you're good this is horrible. I've never had Zoom do this to me. I I I I, I take it back. I had Zoom just decided one day. It's like, oh yeah, it's well, probably me. It's you. No, it's the beards. They the 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 they, it, the the camera can't handle this much beard. <laughs> hey, if it's you my make... magnetic personality. There you go. Oh man, messes messes with the radio waves or the Wi-Fi or something. Oh man. See, see that cat right there? It's probably those those damn uh what? Yeah. That that cat right there, when I record my other show, it freaks out. So if I'm recording and I'm set up with my my whole thing, that cat starts meowing the entire episode. As soon as I turn the camera and everything off, it stops. Meow. Yeah. Now it's just a grumpy ass cat now. Like, Is it a filmation thing? It's a heart Hanna Barbera thing. The cat doesn't like. Uh... I I don't know, it, it, and it doesn't. What was matter. the show? You know the show that I love. Which one? Go ahead. No. The uh... oh, what what was the one with the teenager teenagers in outer space outer space riding like space motorcycles and the monkey uh, the winged monkey guy? Yeah, that's a uh, that's a uh, um um. Uh, space um space stars it's a uh, um space ghost and the uh um uh teen force is the guys that ride around on motorcycles and you have uh, um space ace and dino and uh um astro so astro from the jetsons gets a job as a cop <laughs> and has and was it really astro though yeah that's astro from uh supposed to be astro from uh the jetsons well i knew it was the voice as a kid but i don't i don't think i knew that it was actually supposed to be yeah, exactly. astro or maybe i did you know there were so many of those shows that i watched and i didn't even realize that i watched them i don't know i guess like i was i was watching some things about like the worst cartoons ever and a lot of them came up and i was like i thought that show was great Oh, I, I thought Dino Mutt was hilarious. Oh my god! I got, I got the, I, I collect. My, my whole thing is, is that I, I am a physical media guy. I love because you know streaming, they take stuff away from you all the time, and if you own it, they can't take it away from you. And a lot of cartoons sure. that I grew up on are lost now. They're, they're, you know. I Turbo Teen. Remember Turbo Teen, where the kid turns into the car? Yes. Lost I have media. Five, five episodes out of thirteen that I found are are 
I found five that are in English. I found two more, ones in German and ones in Spanish. Out of 13 episodes. And I'm like, that was a big cartoon, man. And it's it's pretty well known. Kids, I mean, people still know it, but yeah, it's it's kind of they just d- didn't care about it. I and loved I, that show. I used to play that show after school and I would do like try to do the animation with the hand. I'd be like <laughs> turning into a car or whatever. I didn't even like cars. <laughs> I don't know why. You just watched I would watch whatever when you're a little kid. Oh. My, didn't my, matter like how terrible it was. Yep. I I am that way. My my wife gives me crap because at one point we didn't have cable. Because so all we had was whatever we could get over the, the antenna. And I'd watch stuff like Friends and, and Seinfeld. And I don't like either one of those shows. <laughs> and she's like, then why are you watching them? I was like, because there's nothing no, else. I on. can't stand them either. Yeah. And she's like, then then do something else. Yeah. I'm like, that was yeah. unfortunate. Yeah. Now, now I watch TV constantly. I everything's streaming, and I I'm my own boss, so I go to work and I turn the TV on at work. So I watch fourteen to sixteen hours of TV a day. Oh, that's <laughs> terrible! I'm so sorry. <laughs> TV is really the worst nowadays. Yeah, but I don't watch hardly anything new. <laughs> you watch reruns of Taxi. No, I, I watch um my my go to show is legitimately MASH. I've watched MASH each episode probably a hundred times. And yeah, I Yeah, MASH is a great show. Yeah. Um and then I watch old horror, you know, like um you know, Twilight Zone. I watch that still a lot. Um Jesus, what was I watching the other day? Um yeah, I just go back and rewatch old shows that that you know I haven't watched in a while, or you know whatever. And I do watch some new stuff, but not a whole lot anymore. So, oh, that's nice that you can even find that stuff. I never know where that stuff is. The only stuff I ever see on TV is just garbage. It's all like uh, Kardashians and and morning shows, like morning news programs or like daytime news programs. You're like, how did you get to be a newscaster? You're like the stupidest person I've ever heard in my life. <sighs> There's some of them so people boring, like... and they have to pretend like it's like it's interesting, and they say like they like listen to some boring spiel from some asshole that they're interviewing, and then they say they say amazing, and they're like no, you're not fooling anybody. <laughs> just because you said that what they just said was amazing doesn't mean what it, that it was actually amazing. I've heard an interviewer say, so Tammy, I hear that you made this new book about blah, 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 and you wanted to, because you wanted to make a children's book because you didn't have any good, when I was a kid, I had a children's have Amazing. I said, that's not amazing. That's stupid. You are stupid. It makes me mad. I get to, I start yelling, you know, like in the morning before I have my coffee. I'm like, what are you talking? Get, get, get out of here. Turn this off. Put on Mr. Boogity. <laughs> put on put on put on uh Unga Bunga. What was it? Put on put on uh Captain Caveman and the Teen Angels. I want to watch that. If I'm gonna watch something that requires zero brain activity, I'd put on that. That was a good show. I love. I like that Caveman. one. And the Teen Angels. What, what else was there? There was the Gary Coleman show where he was a dead kid. Yep. He yep. was an angel, right? Yep. Uh, what else was really good? Spider. Uh, legitimately, Spider Man and his amazing friends. I was the most incredible show ever. Yeah, dude. When I was a kid, still uh, Spider Man. I was like, this friends. is killing the Super Friends. It's so much better than the Super Friends. And they, they had to... Red Skull on, and I was like, he's like a nut. That blew my mind when I was a little kid that you could have like something that was ki- kind of harkened back to, to real history, you know? Mm-hmm. Dracula was on Spider Man and yep. Amazing Friends. It showed their origin stories, yep. like they each had their own origin episode. I was like, what? 
You can that, do that on television. This is great. I thought it was so cool. Yeah, I I still I actually got seasons two and three on DVD, but the only way you can get them on DVD is to get them from like Europe. Because they never released them legally in the United States is outside that- of VHS tapes. Yep. I wonder why that is. Well, they never released my, anything uh, legally. Uh, let's see. What do we got down here? Ah, right. ah. Yep. yep. Okay. Um, I don't have it. See, see, you got these, which they've never released in the United States either. The Hulk cartoon from yeah. the, the eighties. That was um yep. it was the uh, Spider Man Incredible Hulk hour. Um there you go. And the Red Skull lives. They had that during an hour with what? With Spider Man and sometimes She Hulk, right? Um Didn't they have a She Hulk cartoon too? No, they had a, a Hulk cartoon in the nineties, and She Hulk was a reoccurring character on that one. Uh, which actually, nah, actually that was uh, after, that was after my time. Yeah, see, that's actually a pretty good cartoon. Um, it's not great, but it is actually a pretty good one because they actually um, use a lot of the 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 Hulk's actual villains. So it's got you know Abomination, the Leader, Modok, um, just a lot of the gamma radiated people are are in there they bring she hulk into it and all that stuff so it actually ends up being pretty good so i love i love all the gamma radiated people i'm i I that's my uh, favorite show gamma radiated people (laughs) yeah the uh um the uh what are the what are they called the 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 league of gamma radiated people (laughs) oh yeah is they're, they're all just da, 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 giant, da, jacked and green. Da, 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 da. What? I said they're all giant, jacked and green. Yes. Yes. I mean, I guess so. I don't know. I don't discriminate. Whatever, whatever they look like, it's all good. It's all good by me. <laughs> oh man, I'm sitting here looking. I and- tried. I went looking for. I went looking for Drac Pack. A uh-huh. few years ago, when I found out that that was the thing, and I couldn't, I could only find one episode in Spanish. Uh, I've I've put Drac Pack on my show. I have probably really of Drac Packs on my show. Yeah, uh, I actually have Drac Pack. Now I know on, where to go now. Yeah, I actually own Drac Pack on DVD. So, <laughs> um, Groovy is the one that, I was that, looking. I was I was sorry. Go ahead. Groovy Ghoulies was another one that people would get mixed up with drag pack. Uh, one was Hanna Barbera and the other one was uh filmation, I believe. Filmation was drag pack. No filmation was groovy ghoulies. I think. Really? Yeah. Drag pack was, uh, um, I want to say Hanna, I want to say it's either Hanna Barbera or Ruby Spears, which doesn't matter because those were all Ruby. Yeah. End up being under the Hanna Barbera. Probably. Uh, I wonder if it was Ruby. It's yeah, I never saw Groovy Ghoulies. I would have loved Groovy Ghoulies, but my time was a little bit after the whole Groovy thing. And then I didn't even know that Drag Pack was a thing. But years ago, I was teaching myself how to animate, and I was I was trying to develop a a, a new show about like you know based on like a Hanna Barbera thing when that was still like mm-hmm. a new idea when it wasn't like you know totally trendy to pretend to be Hanna Barbera. You know what I mean? That kind oh, of yeah. thing. And I, w- I wanted to do a show about like a bunch of monsters like living together. And I called it the Creep Crew. And I guess it was kind of like Clue Club, mm-hmm. but like Creep Crew. And then I found a drag pack. And I was like, oh my God, this, is, this has all been done before. Like there's nothing original. Nope. Every time I think I'm doing something original, it, tends, it turns out there's a million other people doing the exact same thing. I'm so boring, right? Oh, I do it better though. Yeah, there you go. I uh, I talked to to Neil Gaiman, of, God, forever ago, when the Harry Potter books, cool. when the Harry Potter books first popped up, and I was like, man, I was and like, he was never... like, "Where's switch?" Yeah, I was like, "Why have you never sued them?" Because you created the character uh, Tim Hunter for DC Comics, which was, and he's like, 
Well, he goes, there's not been any original story since Greek mythology. And I was like, that's true. Yeah, that's pretty true. <laughs> All comes down to the hero's journey. He's uh, basically got it right. Yep. And yeah. He's got it right. I didn't even know about Tim Hunter. I thought you were going to say The Worst Witch by, uh, what's her name? I forget her name. Yeah. No. The I, Worst Witch is the one that Harry Potter ripped off really hard from. Oh, yeah. Well, well Tim Hunter was. Um, at the Witch's School. Only J.K. Rowling made it all about boys and witches that celebrate Christmas for some reason. Yep. Uh, Tim Hunter is Books of Magic from DC Comics. And he's probably the most powerful wizard in the DC universe, but he's a kid and he can either be good or evil. So all the good sorcerers and stuff in the DC universe basically teach him how to be a good magician. And, you know, and he has an owl. He's a little kid with glasses, the whole nine yards. He looks like Harry Potter and it predates Harry Potter by a good decade. <laughs> That's very interesting. How come I haven't heard people talking about that? Yeah, um, when you get I guess to, it, they they use the character uh, sparingly, I guess, because um, he's in the uh, he's essentially in the Sandman universe now. So okay. yeah, so every once in a while they'll release a books of magic book, and now he's he's not a little kid anymore. He's he's you know probably, I think he's like in his I don't know maybe late teens now. In, at least book wise, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I aged like comic book heroes did. Oh my god, DC Comics decided it was it like a year ago that they were going to explain why their characters are still like in their 30s is because that universe's time runs <laughs> slower. And I'm like, we don't need that <laughs> each month. I just, I don't know. I... <laughs> I, I hate it when they try to explain. I, stuff sometimes like that. I think that the that the comics that com that the whole the comics industry gets a little bit too into their own canon, and they have to you know ha they keep fracturing off into universes and things like that. And yeah, I, I think it's a it's a bit much. I think they take themselves maybe a little bit too seriously, and it's I, I don't know. May, I'm not really a comics guy. Maybe you need that because you're so into the lore and this happened and then this happened in this comic and then this leads to this and that comic or whatever. But, you know, at some points, I think it's just uh, it's just a little bit uh, uh, stifling creative, creatively wise. Is that a word? But you know what I mean, though. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly. It's like, I'm not, I don't need... I only learn... You know, what do they call it? The new, the new 52 and Crisis on Infinite Earths and all these things. And now they're bringing it into movies so that they can mm -hmm. just make movies forever. But every movie has to relate to another movie that already happened. And it's like, I don't want to watch all that crap. That's too many movies for me to watch to understand what's going on in this movie. In Doctor Strange 9 or whatever. What did you think of the Doctor Strange movie? Did you like it? The, the uh, Sam Raimi one? I liked it. I enjoyed the hell out of it. But that's just, you know, it was fine. I don't yeah. remember what happened anymore in it. I who was in it? Oh, Wanda was in it. Wanda, yeah, Wanda was like a bad guy, right? Yeah. Okay. And they'll bring her back. She'll be a good guy again next yeah, time. Yeah, because because uh, there's the multiverse, so they can just bring a different Wanda in. That's not a bad guy. No, okay. fine. Yeah, no, nothing means anything. That's fine. Zero <laughs> stakes. Even your high stakes doesn't mean anything. You can always come back. You die and then you come back. It's nice. See, that's pretty standard in the comic. <laughs> you die in this. Everybody dies. Everybody. That's true. Back. That's true. Can't stay dead. I just think it's so funny that when they remember when they made such a big deal about Superman dying like yep. thirty years ago or twenty years ago. Thirty years ago, ago, almost months. exactly, because they're having an anniversary coming up soon. It took like a month for him to come back. Oh, it yeah. took a full year. And it like now full. we have now he has a black suit. Yep. Cool. Oh my god. I worked. I was like, isn't that just General Zod? I always thought that was so. I was like, why don't they have a Zod comic? I'd be all about like just just Zod with a big like Z emblem in silver on his black costume. Well, they... Terrence Stamp. Oh my. 
You know, when it when it was Michael Shannon played Zod, I actually liked that one. His because I thought he he's played good. Um, he's have, a great he's a great actor. Oh yeah, he didn't have the cool outfit though. No, and they did. He was he, at no point in the movie did he say, "Blow them a kiss." <laughs> Superman, I love her. Who who is that lady? Wasn't she in V or is, uh, she was Sarah in Douglas? V too, right? Huh? Ursa, uh, the cruel. Yes, uh, Sarah Douglas. Um, she not um, not uh, it's not it's not uh, it's not uh, Diana from uh, um, God dang it, no, it's not Diana from V. <laughs> Oh, I thought they were like the same person. Nope. They look like the same lady, don't they? Yeah. I uh, always thought they were the same person when I was a kid. I was like, oh my God, is that her? And then I thought that the guy, I thought that, uh, what was what was the mute's name? The tall mute from Superman 2. Um, it's something stupid. It's like, er. It's like, yeah, it's it's legitimately like. Yeah, a, something like that. Yeah. Non, non, non and I thought that he I thought that he was a flautist who I saw on like Sesame Street or something when I was a kid. I saw this guy who looked just like him. I was like, who's the guy from Superman 2? They're like, no, that's a classical musician, Michael. It's not the guy from Superman 2. I'm like, I think it looks just like him. Oh yeah. Well, he there's a, several guys that around that time that looked like him that played like the villain, like the heavies. In other movies, and I thought it was him, you know, you know, shit. When I was right, you mean yeah. the guy with uh, the teeth, the iron teeth from uh, one um, of those Bond yeah, movies? Yeah, uh, Richard that Keel. Guy's name? Richard Keel. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought he, he kind of looks like him if you put a beard on him and whatever. Yeah, I thought Richard Keel was uh, at uh, was uh, Lurch when I was a little kid too. So... <laughs> <laughs> no. no, no, no. See Ted Cassidy. I thought that Ted Cassidy was David Cassidy's dad when I was a little kid, but well, uh, well, you got that would have been whoa! Oh, that what a mashup! You were talking about Scoot, the new Scooby Doo movies, Partridge Family meets the Adams Family. That would have been great. <laughs> yeah, Could have done like three seasons out of that. Think of the the hilarity. Imagine like uh, Bonaduce, Daddy Bonaduce, and Wednesday Adams together. Forget it. Wednesday wouldn't let him get away with anything. No. The, the and the best thing is, is those new Scooby Doo movies were, man, that was pretty like cool back then. I mean, they had the actual people come in and do voices. And, you know, that's actually yeah. Sonny and Cher. That's actually um, um, uh, it's actually Batman and Robin. Yeah, it's actually Batman and Robin. Uh, was it? It's actually what Adam West and uh, Burt. War- no. It's Shaggy, so it's uh Casey Kasem doing the voice of Robin, but um, um, is did they get Adam West or did they get the guy who did the uh, Batman and Robin in the seventies? I want to say it was uh, Super Friends and stuff like that. Well, Super Friends had Adam West too. The filmation stuff had uh, some males. As I have to look this up, but um, yeah, I mean it had Don Knotts on it. It had um. Um, freaking uh, Jerry Reed <laughs> from Smokey and the Bandit before Phyllis Smokey. Diller, Phyllis Diller, the Three mm-hmm. Stooges. Of course, they didn't have the real Stooges. Weird. Yeah. And, um, Did they have Larry Fine? He was still alive. I um, I remember thinking that that bat cookies were the coolest thing. We're like, well, I don't have any Scooby snacks, but I do have these bat cookies. Bat cookies. (laughs) I remember being a kid in the little... I was like, I want the bat cookies! I was like, Mom, let's make bat have black icing back then, though, so they were just like blonde blonde bat cookies. They're albino bat cookies, I guess. Well, we had the um, we had a local uh, like grocery store that made bat cookies at Halloween time, so you could actually get bat cookies. Cool. Oh, nice. Man. See, that would have been my dream when I was a little kid. To have the bat cookies? Did they make them year round, <laughs> or you only know, they, only 
only at Halloween. They, you they, couldn't, I, you couldn't I only go remember there in like Halloween February time. and get bad cookies. Yeah. Be like, can you just make me some bad? You could probably put it in order, though. You could oh, order really some bad good. cookies they have to have for Valentine's Day, I bet. Like, like cookie cutters and stuff like that. So, yeah, they got the cutters. Yeah, they're, 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 I know you they have exist. the cutters back there, Francine. <laughs> Thanks. Is roll out the dough. <laughs> yep. Oh my god. But yeah, god dang it. Seriously, I'm going. I went. I went too far back. Let's see, Batman. <laughs> She's scrolling. Yeah, it's like, and holy crap, that just jumps. I don't know. And, yeah, that. All right, let's do question time. Yeah, let's do question time. Okay. All right. Do you have questions? Yes, I do. Okay. All right. Being a horror host. When did you start being a horror host? I love this. I started being a hot host, I don't know, maybe 2013, maybe. Officially, unofficially, it was 1959 when they first asked me to do my own show on WSBR TV out of New Jersey. But um, more recently, uh, I think I started performing uh, as a cabaret act in New York City, like in 2011. I guess, I think it was 2011. I don't know, stuff was foggy back then. Mm-hmm. And then that kind of morphed into um, into doing horror hosting uh, through my social media, just because I, you know, I had a, a phone. I had one of those phone things that you could do like computer stuff on, you know? Yep. And I was like, oh, well, let me let me see. Maybe I can do, you know, something like that. Ah, look out, there's something behind you. Duck, <laughs> duck, duck, what is it? That's a Vince. It's a younger <laughs> version of you. <laughs> and he is. Hey, kid. Hey. Lay off of those... Uh, those uh... Is he still there? Yeah, he's way back here in the back. He's he's tra- What are you oh, doing, bud? Now. That's it? That's all we get? We get a two-second cameo and then he's out? He's yeah, like, he's... oh, yeah, I see. Oh, yeah, dad's on the internet again. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, he's like, I gotta go find my game. Now he's gonna chill out on the couch. I gotta um, go. <laughs> he, 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 Does, he, these kids and their video games nowadays. Oh, well, he, when he I was a kid, we played checkers and we liked it. Well, he he's got he's got autism, so he gets stuck on certain things, and he he's right now he's stuck on these video couple video games. So we just let it go. I get I get I get stuck on the toilet when I get stuck on my video games. <laughs> Then I'm like, oh God, I gotta have to sit. This is not good for me. I have to sit up. How many bubbles can you pop? <laughs> and then there's the video game. It's like, I'm never gonna win this thing. Get out of here. <laughs> um, what was I talking about? So, huh. yeah, so I used to perform and uh, I did the character on stage and I would like sing songs that I made and I would do like songs from Meatballs. I actually did a song called Moon Dust that was in Meatballs. But I had instead of harmony singing, I had um, I had pitched werewolves howling behind me. So like it kind of sounds like like they're singing back up, and then and then it goes off, and it's kind of like makes you sick, and you kind of go like like that a little bit. Yeah, but like for a second, it sounds really pretty like that. So I would do that, and then like you know go like these. I had a big cape. I still have it, but covered with sequins. It was my performance cape. And I would hang out in the back with like, uh, they were uh, burlesque artists. Mm-hmm. And I, I guess I was kind of like a burlesque artist myself, but I didn't do like a lot of tassel twirling. I did like more singing and stuff like that. And, you know, people would think I was a magician because I had a cape on. And I was like, no, no, they're like, are you going to do some magic? And I was like, no, I don't have any actual talent. Well, you know, a little bit, but like I'm nothing that I practice, you know, every every day like when I'm not here like you know I just do my thing and stand there and you know try to be stupid and the people loved it they loved it but then I was like uh, okay so how do you do this on the internet and I kept seeing people um like posting about themselves on Facebook and stuff and I was like aren't you embarrassed to be talking about yourself on Facebook like nobody cares what you think you know you change your status 
or something and people would be like oh like uh, uh what, what's her name uh liz liz bunky is feeling uh tired and it shows a picture of her and she's like She's like, she does not want, Liz, I don't want to clean the closet out today or or whatever. And I'm like, who cares about you cleaning? It's like, oh, I had to wash my dog's butt today or whatever. And you're like, oh, TMI, you know? So I made the character uh, that I was doing on stage be like the social media presence of me because he's not afraid he wasn't embarrassed to talk about himself like what used to be a crazy uh, show of ego, egotism. You know what they I mean? It's like, why would you take a picture of yourself and put it on the internet for all these people that you don't really know to see? You know, yeah. like, why? Who does that? What kind of bizarre psychology makes you want to put yourself out there for other people's... I don't know, what, amusement, I guess? Are you amused by that, you know? Are people amused by what they're not really friends from high school are doing every day? So I was like, okay, so I'll make it. Okay, so the character is like kind of an egocentric ex-monster horror movie star who's washed up and, uh, and uh, you know, what he got, he's over, you know, he's not taking drugs anymore. You know, he got over that finally after like, you know, 60 years or whatever that he's not, maybe he's, you know, the, the old, the old spook show, late night, horror show failed. And now he's back and he's on social media and, and uh, he's bored. So that's why he's taking pictures of himself and putting them out there every day. Little did I know that everything eventually was normalized. And now normal people post pictures of themselves every day on the inst on the Instagram and the Facebook. Like it's not just you know the weirdos who were like, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Now literally everybody does it. You know, your grandma does it. So it's like uh, it's like my joke lost somewhere, and now I'm just another idiot doing it. Like it's no longer commentary. It's you know, it's no longer yeah. satire. It's just like uh, me being obsessed with myself, and like the joke is dead. Oh yeah, not that bad. No, but I I always tell everybody this. I was like, you got you got to be able to poke fun at yourself and make fun of everything because you can't take shit too seriously. If not, you're gonna freaking have an ulcer, and I got I got enough crap that I just I don't take anything seriously anymore. So that's right. I said, well, I certainly don't take myself seriously. I, I now I take everything too seriously, except for myself. Well, you, you got to be able to poke fun at yourself because if you you gotta if you don't, then if somebody does, you get up, you know, you get kind of upset about it, and I'm like, right, somebody's got to poke you. Mm hmm. Might as well be me poking fun at myself. Right. I'm not going to poke. This isn't going to poke itself. Or it is going to poke itself. No, I'm going to poke myself. I'm not poking anybody else. Yeah. Who else am I going to poke? Got to poke myself. <laughs> it's pandemic time, right? Yes. Everybody needs a poke. Everybody Every needs now and then. Next question. All right. So, did you have anybody that you looked up to when you became a horror host? No. No, nope. no, nobody at all. I've never even heard of horror hosting. I didn't even know it was a thing. I thought I invented. It. No, that's not true. No, Elvira, of course. Elvira was uh, my generation. She's the main. She's the main person, the main deal. I think she's the best. She did it the best. She did it. She's done it the longest. She's definitely been the most successful with it. Um, by the time I was really conscious and, and allowed to stay up late, uh, we didn't have horror hosting in a, in the New York area. Um, it was like, uh, I guess there was Chiller Theater on, on uh, WPIX before. And um, by the time I got there, it was done. You know, Zachary had long since retired. Uh, and they didn't have, they had nothing. So I thought it was completely dead. When I started up, I didn't realize that there was still a lot of horror hosts like in the Midwest and uh, on the West Coast and stuff, because on the East Coast, it was almost entirely dead. 
Yeah. At least in, in my local area, which was New York, like you'd think in New York, they would have a horror host. Like it, it would yeah. make sense, but I don't know. They moved on to other stuff that was like, uh, you know, a bigger draw. We had horror movies in Abbott, Abbott and Costello and Tarzan movies on um, the weekends, like in the afternoons, like on a Saturday afternoon. But uh, night times, I don't think there was much going on at night. I guess there was like, uh, yeah, chiller theater, but I, ne I never saw it. And then by the time I was old enough to stay up late, it was like Freddy's Nightmares and stuff like that would be on Channel 9. And that was terrible. And I would watch that every now and then. And then you see like uh, Elvira would be on, you know, MTV would do like those rock in the MTV parties. So you'd see her every now and then or on beer commercials. And then her movie came out and I was like, wow, she's like a genius like that. This is hilarious. It's still, I th still think that her movie is one of the funniest movies of the 1980s, you know, up there with Pee Wee's Big Adventure and uh, I don't know, whatever, Caddyshack or some shit like that. I, I still watch that movie a couple times or probably at least twice a year. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I watch it over and over and over again. Yeah, I I finally recently started watching the uh, um, the what the newer one that she did. Well, newer one, uh, the one Haunted Hills. Out. Yeah, yeah, Haunted Hills. And then I, they has had that on. Uh, um, as I'm saying, trying that's to like that. that's nostalgia now. It's been like 20 years since that one came out. Right? Yeah, and that doesn't even seem right. I'm sitting there looking at it. They're like, that's how old? That's not right. <laughs> Yeah, I remember being really disappointed by it when it came out, but now I look at clips from it and I'm like, oh, that's that's pretty good. It's not that bad. No, it's no, better it, than it, most stuff that they make nowadays, you know. Yeah, it, it it well, it's like finding out some of the backstory behind it and everything and how it was it would been in production for at that point almost you know, 10 years. And it was like, oh, Okay. <laughs> All the you know. Yeah, she basically going. like had to self-produce it with her husband, right, or yep. something like that. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Because uh, not easy. No, I I couldn't imagine trying to front movie money like you know because she's like we we sold everything we we put everything into this. I'm like I couldn't imagine just deciding to go. You what? We're making a movie. I'm selling everything. We're putting everything into this movie. My wife. Would we're be going like, to Bulgaria. Yeah. My wife would be like, I don't know what you're doing. Um, you can do it by yourself because I'm not. <laughs> Here's the divorce papers. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, they eventually went that route. I guess I wonder if Haunted Hills was the start of it. Who knows? Well, let's see. That came out 20 years ago and she's been with the same girl for 15. So <laughs> five year window. That's what it was. Yeah, that's what it was. That's what I need. I need, I need a husband to uh, to produce a movie for me. That's what I need. <laughs> uh, then I then I can divorce him for all his money. <laughs> yeah, because if you if you get the right guy, you can just walk out with all that money. Hey, it's just as easy to marry a rich man as a poor man. That's what they say. <laughs> That's what the ladies told me in Long Island <laughs> when I visited that one time. I went roller skating. <laughs> well, I can, I could see technically, <laughs> but in practice, no. No. <laughs> no. no. All right. No. So I got to ask you about the masks. How did you get into making masks? I don't know. I thought it would be a good idea or something. <laughs> I was stupid. I was like, you know what I need? I need an occupation that's the messiest thing you could possibly imagine. Hmm. I wonder if there's an occupation where you take a huge lump of mud and then you cover it up with a bunch of powder mixed with water that turns into a rock. And then you pull all the mud out and you throw it everywhere. And then that mud turns into powder that gives you cancer. And then you pour a bunch of liquid rubber into that rock that you made. <laughs> it's literally the messiest thing that I can think of. I could see that. I could definitely see that. Maybe those like some of those jobs with like the poo, like a poo farmer on or, or, that show. 
that show bad bad jobs or whatever messy jobs what was it called dirty jobs dirty jobs yeah dirty, dirty jobs. jobs yeah like that i'm a poo farmer uh, i take poo and use it to grow new poo and then you know we have to throw and then this is the machine that comes around and throws the poo everywhere every day we have to till the poo <laughs> to make more poo we to make more poo and this is a poo machine whatever his name's ralph we have to we bring him in, you know. Oh my god! But uh, no, it's uh, seriously. I've always uh, been interested in special effects and uh, makeup and monsters and all that kind of thing. So uh, I started learning how to do that when I was like ten or whatever because uh, I rented Michael Jackson's The Making of Michael Jackson's Thriller. I guess I decided that I wasn't afraid of it anymore. So I got over that and then uh, rented that and learned all about Rick Baker. And he showed how he did all that stuff, you know, behind the scenes and that whole thing. So then I started learning that and I got all the books that I could possibly read about it. Dick Smith's uh, Do-It-Yourself Monster, Monster Makeup Handbook and Tom Savini's Grand Illusions and that. And uh, I read all those things. Dad, that so I always knew how to do it. Yeah. And then... Um, and then a few years ago, like through this whole uh, horror hosting thing, like a bunch of people that followed me were mask makers. So I would follow them back and I'd be like, oh, that's so cool. I didn't realize that that was like a job that you could do. You just make masks and be awesome at the same time and people collect your mask. So I said, well, I don't know, maybe I'll try to do that. So I, I gave myself about a year. I came out with a bunch of masks and like luckily the second one that I made was like a pretty pretty good seller and like I sold a whole bunch of them and I was like I, I don't want to do my job anymore if I can sell like you know a bunch of these masks every month and maybe I don't have to do my my poo job no I haven't seen your roller bud I can quit the poo farm quit the poo farm there's your shoes right there <laughs> well what, what's your favorite mask that you've done so far Vince, what are you doing? Frankula? I call him a Frankula. He's a Dracustein. He's like a half Frankenstein, half Dracula guy. He lives in the swamp behind Severe Manor. But I have, I actually have a, my own, I did, I did one of myself, of course, because. Yeah. You know, that just kind of goes with the territory. Why would I not do a Mikey Severe mask? So maybe that's my favorite one. I don't know. I got a bunch. I have some back here, but not too many of them because I tend to I tend to ship them out as soon as I make them. So yeah, I, I don't keep a whole lot, a hell of a lot for myself. You don't you don't keep one of each. No, I I really should though, but I don't. I have like um, you know, it, it, like I said, everything is a mess, and everything is like I I'll have um master copies mm -hmm. but they're usually not painted and they're not for display they're just like in a closet somewhere like tied up in plastic to try and keep them and you fill them up with foam so that they hopefully they don't disintegrate and then you can use them to make more molds later but i got like the garage is full of molds and and the closet is full of of uh production molds and whatever normally if i if i have a bigger bigger uh shop one day maybe i'll keep everything out like in the front area where the people come in and you do business and you see me and i sit behind the desk you know with the cigar and i put my feet up and i say like oh yes i'm very interested in filling your order for you know five thousand mikey severe masks Mr. Mr. Department Store Chain Owner, but first, what are you going to do for me? I want to see the money, you know, right there. Let's talk. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk hard, cold hard cash first, Mr. Gimbals. Then, then Mr. you got to Macy's. show them your uh, your your piece of uh, Stonehenge that you have in your warehouse. I have a piece. I have a piece of the Berlin Wall. <laughs> It's got spray paint on it. The uh, now making these masks is you have you ever got oh, Halloween three reference? Got yes. it, got it. Yes. I know those things. I'm a horror guy. I yes. got it. Have you ever Sorry. got? Have you ever had somebody like go? You know, complain about like oh, I have the rights to that or anything like that on any of the masks you've done? 
No, luckily not, because I'm I'm still just a tiny blip out there. And I haven't really, well, let me think. Have I really done any copyright infringement yet? No, but I'm planning on it. I have a uh, one from Salem's Lot that I'm going to do soon that I haven't seen anybody do from the 1979 version. So hopefully that will be coming out this year. And um, uh, what else? Frankenstein. You know, Frankenstein, as long as it doesn't look too much like Boris Karloff, it's no big deal. Or I hear that the that Bella Lugosi's estate is quite litigious. So we'll see. I have a Bella Lugosi plan for the future. But mostly I just do my own takes on the characters because that's what I'm interested in that weird area between like rip off Frankenstein's getting ripped off by somebody else until they go totally off model and they're the wrong color and they look like a version of Lon Chaney Jr. and Boris Karloff and Glenn Strange and, you know, Dracula played by, uh, who was the one in the, the 70s, you know, like, and Jack Palance all at the same time, like, mashed together with neon bolts or whatever wearing makeup well you can do like the the uh, um the mexican knockoff the mexican bootleg knockoff of, yeah yeah i the, do the uh, mexican hat dance knockoff <laughs> we uh we just had the discussion the other day because um with um mexican knockoffs i i, I grew up with he-man and stuff like that and uh there's these mexican bootleg knockoff he-mans that make them their faces are painted like luchadors so they're painted like mask, but it's still obviously He-Man and obviously Skeletor. And I had them and I, I had a, they're, they come in a baggie with a little bit of cardboard stapled. And I guess you can still get them from Tijuana if you're, but I have no idea what happened to mine. And I need uh, another one back. Cause it's legitimate. That is so cool. Yeah. I can't believe I've never heard of that before. Yeah. It, um, Are they bare chested or do they, I guess they're bare chested and they yeah, have they're masks bare chested on. Yeah, and then they have mess. And the, are there? Is their hair blonde or is it? Black? Um, they're all Do they hand paint painted. The hair. Okay. Wait a minute. Let, let's see. That's similar to the skeleton okay. I had, except for right. it's painted like the red eyes, and it's it's yeah. Um, but He Man was legitimately like the blonde hair, but I, and then he had like a, a um almost like a sugar skull painted on his face too. So Neat. yes, but every one of them look different. I've never seen, I've seen several different ones and none of them look the same. So they all have to be hand painted. Yeah. So, they had like three or four ladies just doing that. Yeah. Probably, you know, making, the back of the factory, making $2 uh, a day in uh, Tijuana. So, <laughs> it, it beats cutting the heads off of chickens. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever tried to cut the head off a chicken? Yes. <laughs> I worked on a farm. I worked on a farm. <laughs> there you go. Yes. You have the, you have, a, a, this is going to get bad, but you, you have the tree stump and you have the two nails that go in the tree stump. You stick the chicken's head in there and you pull and we'll end it there. <laughs> it like turns into a uh, Willy Wonka in the chocolate factory. Yeah. <laughs> Pure nightmare fuel. <laughs> Uh, so how is how is the 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 mass business doing the rest of the year when you're not how ha having halloween time there surprisingly good i think uh probably summer is the best time uh deadest is the beginning of the year like right after christmas to about march or so those 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 two months it's like almost dead so i have to come up with other things to do you know i do a lot of um uh paints and i refurbish classic monster masks for people people give me their like vintage masks and things and i kind of fix them up and repaint them or give them a new style do that kind of thing but um in the summertime like mask people go crazy because i think they all know that like we get really um really down in the woods, you know, before Halloween. So they start ordering in the summertime. And and plus they just get antsy, uh, antsy for Halloween, you know. Like they can't they can't uh, stand to be without their masks or whatever. Well, and then, what's, uh, your, what's your biggest seller? My biggest seller? I don't know. It's hard to say now. 
for a while, it was that second mask that I ever did, which was a green skull, a bright green skull with red eyes, kind of like the uh, the Bicel, uh die cut yeah. uh, Halloween decoration that you'd see yep. everywhere. Um, that was a really big one. I've sold hundreds of those. Um, I have the Santa Claus mask, which is a big seller that I actually sold to. I sold the design to um, Ghoulish Productions, which is a cool uh, mask company. One of the bigger ones, one of the uh, high quality. They're, they're, they're a really great company that's uh, run out of uh, Mexico. Um, I think they actually use the same facilities as Trick or Treat Studios uses or one like right next to it, like in the same town or something like that, you know, whatever. Um, but they have all the factories down there and everything. And uh, they make like a, a, a less expensive version of my mask, which is pretty good. Um, but yeah, I sell, I sell a ton of those uh, Santa masks and I offer him like in a clean, like pretty nice Santa version and then a bloody like horror slasher movie Santa version. And you, he's all like dirty. He's dirty and covered with soot and blood. It looks like, you know, and it's all like blood, like from, you know, hacking, not like he's bleeding, but like yeah. he's just chopping. Spatter and up. not, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So the kid, uh, the heart, the kids love that one, like the Slipknot kids and those things, like like that mask a lot. Um, and then like, you know, like ladies will buy like the pretty one, the pretty nice Santa Claus and just, decorate their house with like a Santa literal life-size Santa head and he's just like ah, hi he's just looking all cute like that like I'm Santa I see you when you're sleeping and I guess they don't get creeped out so good for them um what else is a good seller uh Mikey Severe sells okay Sweet Chuck sells great he's the Frankula um he's uh wait here where do I have him where do you go Oh, here he is. Please hold. Please. This, this is my paint master for Sweet Chuck. Nice. So uh, the paint that I do now is actually is a little bit different, but this is the first one that I ever did. He has less hair now and he's lighter. He's not he's like a, a paler blue and his, his makeup is more vivid. And he has like veins all over his cheeks, his ears are my red. But he's a good seller. And uh, what else? I did, speaking of knockoff bootleg action figures, I did a, um, a mask based on a, a bootleg character by, do you, uh, do you know this guy, uh, Killer Bootlegs? He does, uh, he was like one of the first guys to uh, invent the whole bootleg toy making thing that happens like around 2008, 2009. And um, he made this character called Phantom Star Killer. Yeah, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. basically, okay, so there you go. Yeah, I have, so I have the comics. Yeah, me did too. For that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's, he's a friend of mine and uh, he commissioned me to make the Phantom Star Killer mask. So I came out with that last year and I wish I had one here to show you because it's a really cool looking mask. I, I've seen and I made it. The, it is awesome. Yeah. The hood. Oh, you saw it? Yeah. yeah the hood and everything. Page. Yeah, that is, that is, yeah. And it was a little bit of an innovative thing because it has, instead of having like sculpted eyes or eyes that you look out through, it has light bulbs, but they're rather deep set within the eye sockets. Mm -hmm. So they're like false eye sockets that you can't see through. Mm -hmm. And the light bulbs are deep inside so that it gives the illusion when the mask turns or when you walk around the room, it looks like the light bulbs, which are like his glowing pupils are following you. So no matter, no matter where you go. So it's like a little bit of an illusion like that. I got to ask, cause I saw it. How does that set on your face to be able to even see out of that? It sits. Well, the holes are right above the eyelids. So okay. they're kind of within the, the skull holes. sockets proper, but he also has little eyelids inside because you know when you're a, when you're a cartoon skull, you could do stuff like that. So that's in between his eyelid, which is right there, and the skull bone. There's like little cracks okay. like that. Okay, because now I, I'm, I'm not saying that it's going to be totally easy <laughs> to see out when you have a glowing light bulb beneath your eye, 
and the back of the socket kind of rests on your cheeks right there like that. Okay. Because I'm sure you can do at it. That. But, you know, Halloween is all about pain and discomfort and danger. So I I, I just took him trick-or-treating last yeah. week. Uh, I went to, I took, I dressed up as Spider-Man. So I have Ooh. the full costume on and the, the mask that you get has maybe eye holes like this. Then you have the, the pieces that go over that. So you can't hardly see. So I'm literally walking with my hand most of the time on my wife. So I know where to go. And she would tell me, she's like sidewalk. I'm like, all right. So I, as I start walking funny, cause I worry about the offset sidewalk. Uh, then I have a uh, I have a full set of stormtrooper armor, and that range of vision is maybe this. <laughs> so I took him trick or treating a couple years ago, dressed as a stormtrooper, having to do the same thing. So <laughs> it's like you th you are bl blind. You're blinder man. Oh man, it's it, it, but then, man, it's like you want to be all cool and like strike the poses and everything, yeah. but you're afraid you're gonna fall down little like, kids kept coming up to me and wanting to like shake my hand and i'm like trying to look like, right. this <laughs> i can't say yo get out of here you just knock them over well you're walking well, into them now my wife's gonna fix the eye so i can open up the eye sockets because those pieces will cover everything so yeah those masks are cool now though oh yeah. and i don't even know they didn't even have good spider-man costumes when we were kids like you had to get the Ben Cooper and like, but the the plastic smock didn't actually yep. look like Spider Man. It was like yellow and blue or some shit. Yeah, or it just had Spider Man's head on the, right. on the centerpiece. Yeah, I did that. I did that as a costume years ago be before before it became like a cool thing. Uh, I was uh, the I was just a ghoul and I had ghoul written here. I made the whole costume. It was more like a 50s, it was more like a 1950s style, like yeah. Ben Cooper Collegeville costume. And, um, you know, I didn't have a vacuum form or anything, so I had to, like, make the mask out of uh, paper mache or whatever, and I was just ghoul. And I had a picture of my own face I painted on here. And then my, my friend, my friend who's a girl, was <laughs> Miss Ghoul. Because, like, in the 1950s, like, no girl costumes had their own identity. No. Just like, you're just, like, the female version of that, okay? And yeah. you're married to him. You're, Ms., you're Mrs. Ghoul. There you go. Congratulations. You're glad, you're glad that you got married and you're not a spinster. You know, you're yeah. lucky. It was either that or it was a uh, she-monster or she-demon <laughs> or... She-demon. Right. Was a, that was a Hammer movie, right? She-demon. She, she Cool, she freak. Yeah, she freak. It's always yeah. half. You have to leave half the phrase taste pretty, just so that everybody knows. Yeah, she was beautiful once. She was beautiful. Uh, but I like I said that's that that uh, Phantom Star Killer mask I yeah. thought was badass. But I'm sitting there legitimately like looking at that picture when you posted it. Like, how the hell do you even wear that? <laughs> but it is so wearable. Yeah. It is wearable. Like, you can do it. And if you painted the back of... I've done this for people. I'll, like, paint the inside of the mask black right there mm -hmm. so that the light doesn't shine back through into the mask as much. So, so it's totally doable. But, like, eh, you know, I, first and foremost, my masks are display pieces because, you know, most people don't want to buy, like, a really expensive mask and then ruin it by putting their faces in it, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, guys who are in the hobby, like, they want to get it, you know, and then display it for years to come and not yeah. mess it up with, like, their, their sweat and their breath and all that crap. But, um, but just because they are masks, I like to make them all wearable. So uh, I do that, you know. For the most part, although I'm getting into like doing more display pieces now, things that are purely display that aren't necessarily met. They're like sculptures, you know, Yeah, yeah. like collect collectible sculptures instead of like a collectible mask. Yeah, the, the, those like I said, your, your masks are amazing. I mean, with what I've seen, I haven't seen any in person um, one day. They look just like that. What you see yeah. is what you get. Yeah. And they're they're. they're super cool looking they, they're very vibrant i mean i can see behind you because you do the uh you got the what gill man 
behind you. This and... is my buddy. This is my buddy Mike Guidon's Gilman uh, creature from the Black Lagoon sculpture that I painted up as a rubber ducky. Yeah, you, you've got these really bright, vibrant colors on some of these, and and it just looks so like nineteen fifties <laughs> in the early sixties stuff. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's the stuff that I'm really into. Uh, I was really excited. That's one of the things that got me into it too. Is like. I was kind of obsessing over these masks um, at this period of time before I was I was performing with the character and doing all that kind of stuff. I was writing a screenplay, and one of the aspect as, aspects about this screenplay was all about these masks from the 1960s, where they were really bright, the, the Ben Cooper psychedelic color neon stuff with the costumes, with the faces. Oh, yeah on the chest and everything that kind of figured into the into the story of the screenplay a little bit and then i saw that there were guys who were doing that within the mask making community who were kind of bringing that back that old school style they were bringing it back uh in the 2000s you know like around 2007 2008 and i was like whoa you're like this is awesome like finally like something you know because when i was a kid i thought that you know, I thought that stuff was fakakta. I didn't want that. I want stuff that looked real mm-hmm. and that stuff, not stuff that was symbolic, but like, you know, now I realize that all of that stuff was just early pop art. Yeah. You know, it really was like some of the coolest art of the 1960s. Oh, but yeah. it was just heaped in with, you know, illustration and toys and like that stuff mm-hmm. wasn't really, wasn't uh, thought of in the same way that it is today. You know, slowly, slowly people, people are coming to, you know, around to the idea that this was some of the greatest art of that time, I think. Well, they, they reissued a lot of the Ben Cooper costumes as wall hangers recently. Yeah. yeah. I had, uh, what was it, Phantom Astronaut and mm-hmm. the glow-in-the-dark Phantom Astronaut. I mean, they're, they're twice the size they would normally be, but they were neat and... and it's well, so cool, right? Oh, yeah. See, I, I hate to say this. I wish somebody, because you're, I mean, to make the, like, really high-end versions of those masks would be awesome. <laughs> so, like, a glow-in-the-dark phantom astronaut, but with the rubber that you pulled all the way over your head instead of just, yeah. The, yeah. I love that. Well, I have this guy. He's a little bit, he kind of has the same face. He's, yeah. like, one of my third masks. He's a, he's a good seller, too. Yeah, That's my. Like the, 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 the Ben Cooper Frankenstein, yeah. Yeah. That's like I think that's I think that's my my paint master actually. That's probably the first one that I did. I do them much better now, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's kind of like the Phantom astronaut, but the astronaut has the helmet, right? Yeah. How cool would that be? With like you know, it comes with a Put with a mask the... and like a fiberglass oh. helmet or something like that. Oh, that would be sweet. Yeah, like light bulbs in the eyes or whatever, or, or you a... know. What would be really cool is it, I, it's imp- it would be impossible to do, but put the, the like the what the like the, the Tesla coil so it goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could do it. I don't know if you'd want to wear it, but you I could just do get it. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The the are, are are there any ones that you want to do? Any any creatures that you'd really love to touch on and make masks of? I mean, yeah. There's so many. I have a book of ideas because, you know, like, because I'll think of something and then like almost immediately forget. But I have to like, I have to write it down, you know, because like, and I'll I'll try to like, um, because it's not really fair. It's like I'll be walking around and all of a sudden the image of a mask will come to me. It'll just, you know, like that kind of like I'll Mm -hmm. get hit like a lightning bolt. So I have to run over and write it all down and kind of write it down in a way that makes me remember like what was so cool about my idea or the, you know, the, uh, the innovation, like something about it, you know, the fact that he's, you know, that the, the lips are glossy or, or the eyes look like this, or he's wearing makeup or, you know, like any one of those, all of those kinds of things. Um, so what do I want to do? I, I really want to do like classic, the classic, movie monsters wearing like each other's makeup in outer space i want to do like i want to do like really old bella lugosi as you know the wolfman or something 
but like with a motorcycle cap on with a leather jacket. I don't know, like, you know, just like weird yeah. things like that, like come to me all the time. And I'm like, oh, that would be like a really cool twist on something to make it look cool. Like if it was, you know, Boris Karloff, but he's, you know, he's a vampire in outer space, you know, <laughs> like that oh, yeah. kind of stuff. I love that. I love all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, there's masks that I see all the time that I want to bring back or whatever. But I'm tr I'm getting away a little bit from redoing the classic monster masks, and trying to like bring my own weird, perverted, you know, crossed mishmash ideas into the whatever the cultural zeitgeist, and like pumping them out onto the internet or whatever, hoping that like the kids who see them now on Facebook or whatever, who see them or in Google searches or whatever. Like eventually that's going to become a nostalgic thing for them where they're going to want that item, you know, five years from now or 10 years or whatever, as soon as they have money yeah. you know, or their parents let them buy it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like the whole thing is that these are like, their masks are things that you want that you can't have. Like you want all of them. People who collect masks want all of the masks. Yep. You know what I mean? It's always masks that they saw somewhere when they were a kid that they want to acquire. Nobody really cares about new masks anymore. So you have to like kind of, kind of, you know, uh, uh, infiltrate into that, that hard wiring or whatever of, mm -hmm. of their brain and, and uh, become iconic. You know, that's what everybody's trying to do is like sculpt a new icon that's going to be like the king of Halloween one day. Yeah. Now, have you ever had anybody approach you about making a mask for like a horror movie or anything like that? I have. Um, I'm actually talking to one guy about it now who is uh, putting the finishing touches on, like doing the promotion for one of his movies now. And he wants to have me do like several. So I don't know. We haven't gotten into it, but hopefully I respect his work and I like the look of his stuff. He really understands like that old school look that I'm into and it reflects in the way that they make their movies and how they look, you know, uh, using like technology that just looks uh, like filmic and mm -hmm. old and kind of like 80s, 70s, but not like, oh, not overboard, you know, not where it looks like that kind of pastiche, you know, yeah. trying to look old, like it just looks good. You yeah. know what I mean? It just doesn't look like digital you know, shot on video crap or whatever. Like it has like a cool filmic look to it. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And um, yeah, I've had people ask me to do, you know, lots of things. And then it's like for every, you know, nine that I talk about, like one of them actually happens. You know, that's the way that the business works. And that's oh, yeah. the way that every business works is like people are always like, I think I want to do this project and then the project falls apart eventually. So, yeah, you know, I just, I talk to everybody. I take it in and I say, great, get back to me when the money's there. And you know, that's it. That's what happens. Yeah. So every now and then, yeah, I get to do something like that. Then it's cool. Yeah. Um, it's funny. Cause you were talking about getting the money. Um, I was getting ready to shoot my first movie. I was had cast. I had scouted locations. I had worked on, you know, a budget. And uh, then the pandemic hit. We shut everything down. And I'm like, I don't even know if I'll ever get back to it. And it sucks because it's something I want to do. But I think I'm going to move on to something else and um, do it like what I'm doing with all my other shows with YouTube and just do it ep episodically and do it in short so I can do like a 15 minute so I don't have to have people there on the set for you know, days on end, I can just go, all right, we'll shoot this on a weekend and we'll edit it and we'll have it on <laughs> come Monday. I, I think a lot of people are coming to that conclusion nowadays that it's, it's better to just be self-reliant and mm -hmm. to do it in a scaled back way sometimes than, you know, try and mount a huge production mm -hmm. or whatever. Like, I, I mean, like even I'm friends with some guys who, who make actual, you know, movie monsters and stuff and have been at it for years and they're kind of like, uh, well, what's the point of this? Like, 
you know, I'm talking to people who who are like my idols, you know, who've been doing it for 30 years. And they're like, Mikey, we like what you do. Like, you can do your own thing. Like, you're just like, you don't have to listen to some, you know, five, five producers and a director who don't know anything about, you know, what's cool or what's good. And they, you know, make you do it 500 times and then they don't even use the design in the end. Like, uh, you know, I want to just do what you do and sell it and be cool. Well, a few weeks ago, I was uh, at uh, a, a horror movie expo over in uh, Virginia. And I'm set up across from David Naughton and then the guys from the, the guys that worked on Hellraiser. So it's the uh, new one. Uh, no, it's uh, Gary Tunnicliffe who worked on Hellraiser three through ten. Yeah, he's uh, awesome. He, he's worked on everything. Um, and then um, uh, Mike Regan, who worked, who's Chatterer from in a bunch of the Hellraiser movies and stuff like that, and he's also a special effects guy. And it's funny because these guys, yeah, they make their you know their day to day job is making horror movies and stuff like that. But he goes, yeah, he goes, I just sculpt you know mike makes the puzzle boxes you know in his free time he also does these little cool like hand monsters it's you know it's got legs but it's a hand and and he, he makes those and paints them you know how people want them i'm like the fact that you know you guys do all these movie stuff and then you he's like yeah that's that's where i have fun you know yeah. that's my job <laughs> it's true yeah and uh Gary, Gary was Gary was a blast. Holy crap, that guy he he doesn't care about anything anymore. <laughs> he's like a fireball, right? Oh yeah, and he go he's semi retired, so he doesn't care if he burns bridges. And uh, he's sitting there telling me he goes, yeah, he goes. I've been telling people that Am Amber Heard was a bitch for years, and no one would pay attention to me. He goes, now everybody listens. I've been telling yeah. everybody that, <laughs> that Johnny Depp's a good guy, and everybody got all pissy with me. So. <laughs> But uh, yeah, he was talking to them guys. I'm like, man, you you guys have like the like, the best like houses at Halloween, right? And Mike's like, yeah, I used to. And now it's just like, eh. <laughs> so. Every day, that's what happens when every day is Halloween for you, you know? Yeah. So I was going to ask you the, th the same thing. Do you do you guys do you go all out on Halloween, or are you just like, ah, eh, it's a Tuesday? It's I don't want to see anybody. I turn I turn my porch light off. I'm terrible. <laughs> terrible it's like i could i mean i guess i could like take all my masks and put them out on the front porch but i'm like then i would have to open the door i'm really i'm really awful about about halloween you know one of these years i'll like i'll do it up and i'll be ready to go but it's just like yeah it's tuesday it's monday this year what a what a weird yeah. what a lame day to have halloween on i make up i make up my sister's kids if they let me the older girl is like too cool now. She won't even let me do the the eyeliner or whatever. She just wants to look pretty on Halloween. Lame. I'm like, you're lame. You kids are lame. Do they ever come over to 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 the house and like try to uh, snag masks to wear? Yeah, sure. They put them on every now and then. Yeah. It's fun. We do photo shoots and stuff like that. That's awesome. But uh, you know, kids kids love masks. I went camping uh yeah. the beginning of October with uh, some of my friends and their kids. And I brought a, a bag full of masks for everybody to try on in the woods because everybody deserves masks. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I I hated it because I went through and found some of my old masks from when I was a kid. And they were the full head. You pull them over. Your face fit inside, you know. And now you get the, the ones that you put on and then there's nothing in the back. They're, they're, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, they're not nowhere as cool as they used to be. You need, you need to buy more expensive masks. That's the yeah. deal. Well, the, the, you know, we got Walmart and stuff like that. We got a spirit store that's not far from here, but even them, you're just like, I, I seen a, I seen one I really wanted, but, uh, it was a little more than I wanted to spend on a mask right now. I found, yeah, a, really right. Cool, I found a really cool Skeletor mask. That looked exactly like the action figure. Nice. And I'm sitting there and I'm staring at it and I'm like. How much was it? I think it was for, uh, 500. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah it's like that's 400. an expensive mess. Yeah. That's something that you don't, you probably don't want to put on and wear on Halloween. See, that'd be the problem is I'd want to wear it. <laughs> I'd want to right. put shit on. <laughs> I get it. I get yeah. it. You'd have to buy two. Yeah. And I don't want to spend a thousand dollars. You'd have to buy two. Yeah. I mean, I spent $400 on a yeah. set of Stormtrooper armor because I, I got lucky. Um, <laughs> and it sets in a tote most of the time. Except for yeah. the helmets. Well, it's not terribly comfortable to wear it to Kroger's, right? It's not terribly uh, comfortable to wear anywhere. Yeah. If you ever watch Star Wars, you never see a Stormtrooper running. <laughs> because you cannot run in a Stormtrooper costume. You can't sit right. in a costume. You can't lay down. You cannot do anything in a Stormtrooper costume. Nope. So. Oh, yeah. But I, I She's am... like, just finished shopping. What did she say? <laughs> No, Just she's like, finally finished. <laughs> but, uh, no, no, I have my Sith robes. So I have robes from Star Wars. Those are great. Because they're, they're just, I pull the hood up, I pull the hood down, I can see, I can move, I can sit down. Um, so you wear you wear your Sith robes with the with the three-quarter mask that doesn't come down all the way in the back. See, I, I thought about doing the Sith robes, and that's why I was going to get that Skeletor mask. So I could put the Skeletor mask on, and then it could be Darth Skeletor. <laughs> right, that'd be awesome. It could be but, Phant Phantom Star Skeletor. Yes. Kill and uh, but I did not want to spend five hundred dollars on a mask. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, I can't say that I do that too too often either. Yeah, but, it's um. But I'll sell you a five hundred dollar mask. Oh, any day. Sure, you would. <laughs> I, I I I'm bad because everybody's like I got all these helmets back here from from all the you know Star Wars and and um, Marvel stuff and whatnot, and everybody's like, "Why well, aren't those expensive?" I'm like, "Yeah, but I get them wholesale, so they're not quite as expensive." <laughs> I see. I feel I have the illusion that I'm actually not spending as much money as I could be. So I spend it's on sale. I spend sixty percent about <laughs> on all that shit. So. Instead of a hundred bucks, I spend sixty bucks. You know, right? It's a good deal. Yeah. Then, then everybody's kids come over and want to put my masks on and helmets. So, do you let them? Do you let them dress up? No, <laughs> no, no, nope. These are nope. daddy's toys. No, no. That's 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 there. The, there are certain things that the little kids. I was like, I'll let them play in the arcade back there. I have an arcade. I was like, you can come in here and play the arcade. And that's as far as I want you to come into this area. <laughs> right. I have all my old toys. I have Shogun Warriors. Remember Shogun Warriors? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I have them over there and over there. And I was like, yeah, no kids are allowed to touch those. And they're like, why? Because they're more expensive than your parents would ever want to spend to replace that if it's broken. That's so cool. My friend, my friend's kid found one in the garbage somewhere a few years ago. That would be insane. Because th those, those are... Even beat up or 200 bucks. Yeah. So, shit. Found one in the trash. I think I found one in the trash when I was a little kid, but shit, that was probably 1984. Yeah. So, <laughs> when they weren't worth anything. Mm hmm hmm So what, what what toys did you grow up with? Because we're sitting here talking about toys. Oh, He-Man. It was He-Man he -Man time. That's that was like all that there was. And I didn't get a ton of a, a ton of toys. You know, I was not one of those kids whose parents just bought them toys willy-nilly. Willy it was mm. birthdays or Christmas, and that was basically it. And if we went to Child World or to Toys R Us or whatever, because, you know, I had the birthday party to go to, it was like, can I have it? No, you can't. You, you don't just get toys every day. <laughs> like, what do you want? Maybe put it on your Christmas list. That was, you know, and that made that makes sense to me. And then I would go over these kids' houses, and they would have, like, the castle from Voltron and like all the figures, you know what I mean? And they'd have like all of the Star Wars and the uh, the uh, um, the C three PO and yep. the Darth Vader carrying case, and you know all of the you know whatever. Um, I was not one of those kids, but I did have every single He Man because I just didn't know because we didn't go down to the toy store ever so i didn't really know what was available 
the only thing that I knew was that they were throwing He-Mans at me every day in commercials on television. That was like all I saw. So I got He-Man. I mean, they are cool. Mm -hmm. He-Man was, was definitely cool for a while, you know, and then I got over it. What else did they have? Uh, they had a really cool thing that I got, which was, I didn't even know about. I think this just like, I think my dad just like wanted it or something like the box art really appealed to him. And I can't remember what it was called, but it was like the figures were like this big and it was like an airship literally because it had like a pump or something and it would pump air. And I guess it could like shoot out all kinds of yeah, air raiders. projectiles. Yeah. Air raiders. Air raiders. And then it yeah. had like a little like golf ball that would float on top and look like it was floating, but it was like air yep. kind of spinning around on top of it. That was cool. I had the hologram. What were the hologram toys? Visionaries. That were like visionaries and yeah. the other ones. I had uh, both supernaturals. And Supernat Supernaturals was the one that I was really into because they were like more like He Man size. Yeah. The holograms, they were really cool. Um, that was basically it, and then like you know, Tinker Toys and Lincoln Logs and stuff like that. So, so I gotta ask you, who's your favorite uh Masters of the Universe character? Yeah, I don't know, probably Skeletor, I guess. He's a big skeleton, yeah. He <laughs> Who else? I liked uh. <laughs> I like some of the She-Ra toys too, because they had the crossover. Yeah, uh, who, the one Mechlekar. No, what was his name? Manleklan. He had like the removable heads and body. Oh, Majulak. Majulak. You couldn't yep. put him back together. Yep. I like the the She-Ra version of Beast Man that had actual fur. Grizzlor. He was Grizzlor was awesome. I had the slime pit. The slime pit was totally cool. Uh, I had the, uh, I thought King Hiss was really cool when he came out. I thought that was awesome. Um, I don't know why. And now I think he's kind of boring. I liked, I had Skull, not uh, Snake Mountain with the microphone. Yeah, I love that. Goes. Yeah, I actually kept the microphone. I, w I wish it still worked because it had a really cool decal on, on the speaker box. Yep. I still have that. Um what else? I had Grace Skull. I had the Eternia playset. I wish I still had that. I had the whole Eternia playset. That was like the last He Man Christmas. It was like the last big Christmas for me. That was, you know? that was one tier, near the end of the toy line too. So that was yeah. And by then it was like both of my parents were working. Like my sister hadn't gone to college yet. It was like there was there was some money in the house. And like I got the Eternia playset. And I was like. Rah! And I put it together. It was so much fun. Dad and I put it together, and we did the thing with the track mm -hmm. and whatever. And I played for with it for about two hours, and then it stayed in the basement. And I don't know that I ever did anything with it again. My friends came over. We played with it a few times. But it's like a lot of those toys. It was like you know, I like to make up imagination games, you know. Mm -hmm. So I had some toys. And I think my my dad threw all that crap away. Then later, I still yell at him. Oh, my, my mom, when I was 14, we moved and she made me sell off all my toys to go move with my stepdad. Yeah. And I, I looked at her and I was like, you know how much money that we got rid of for next to nothing? And she goes, well, you need to stop buying toys. I'm like, I'm buying my childhood back that you made me sell. <laughs> and uh, I've got it's true. I've got a big chunk of it back, but there's certain figures I will never be able to get back because they're just too expensive. So, yeah. And uh, that's we all have, we do. That's well, all we do. We, we're grown up, grown up children buying back our childhoods. Oh yeah, we have the ongoing joke that when uh, if you would have told me when I was a little kid that now almost all the action figures are in scale to one another, I'd have been like, "What? You, you're you're He Man and your GI Joe and your 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 uh your you know Star Wars and your Thundercats. They're all roughly the same size now." And I'd have been like, because, you know, you had He-Man, who was, you know, this tall. And then you had G.I. Joe that was this tall. And then you had Mask that was this tall. And <laughs> now they're all the same scale. They're all six yeah, to seven right. inches. And, you know. Like or, said, like, or they start making the really big ones, like when they started making the Star Wars and the G.I. Joe size or whatever. Mm -hmm. That was pretty cool, too. Yep. The, uh. 
always a sucker for that. Still a sucker for some of the real cool ass toys. So, mm. but uh, I gotta I gotta ask the mask that's uh all right. Let's see that. Okay, hold on. There's a pointing uh to down the the white one with the the white fur behind you. What? Yes, that one. What is that? I think this is a top stone from the 1980s. Uh, it's vinyl. Ah, okay, yes. I bought this from one of one of my friends online because I said because I just think I think it's an excellent sculpt. I love the sculpt. I think it's a lot of fun. It's a simple mask. It's I only got like two or three paint colors on there, and the rest is just the color of the vinyl. See, I believe. I have one growing up that looked almost exactly like that one, but it was yeah. green with uh, the where, where it's, its flesh tone was green. I think the hair was purple. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it was. It's almost exactly like the one I had as a kid. This is a little bit like some of the some of the original top stone masks that they had from the 60s and the 50s too and that it, it kind of emulates that style this is definitely a re-sculpt i don't know if this is a re-sculpt of one of those old ones but it's like all of these masks just got you know they got ripped off so many times and made in different cult uh different countries and stuff oh yeah but i love this one is a little bit too small for me to wear but you can puppet him all right i like that there you go. see that's that's my problem i have a big head <laughs> Yeah, me too. I have an enormous head <coughs> in more ways than one. <laughs> I have a really big head. Now, do you remember um, as a kid, because I know I don't know if this was just local for us, but every year at Halloween time, it probably stinks bad, does it? No, it smells fine. It smells nice. It smells like nostalgia. It smells like, but you would go to like the to the cookies. mall and there'd be like a kiosk in the middle with all the, the masks. You know, oh man. No, I wish we had that. Yeah, we, we had that in our little local mall every year starting, you know, mid-September. The guy would set up a kiosk in the middle of the mall and you would have like your shelves behind you. You would have the masks in each one of them cubbies. And then you would, the guy would go into the middle and he would pull out the mask that you asked for. That's and I awesome. remember so many masks that I wanted as a kid, but you know, my mom and you know, like, no, nope, no, nope, those are too big for you. You're just, and then by the time I was older, they stopped doing it. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we did have it around here, but I just never went to the mall at Halloween time. Hmm. See, I loved it. To get Cause we definitely had malls. Jesus. <laughs> Parabas mall. Forget about it. Parabas. Willowbrook mall in New Jersey. Um, the what we always had were like uh i had like it was like the old-fashioned like dime store drugstore kind of things mm -hmm. and that's where i would always see masks before everything was like a chain dollar store or like so we like genevieve's you remember genevieve's was like kind of like a drugstore and like a general store thing we had those on the east coast um or i yeah i just had a local I guess it was like a mom and pop drugstore. And at uh, Halloween, they would bring out all the masks and they had awesome masks. And like thinking back on them, they were like pretty high quality too yeah. for like the time. Like they were thick. They were kind of thick. They weren't floppy. They had like good polyester hair. They're like half masks like that mm -hmm. with like the hair or a hood so sewn mm -hmm. in. Um you didn't see the biggest brands, but like of the knockoff brands or like even like just the cheaper, you know, like top stone masks or whatever. By the 80s, they were like, they were pretty good. Like they're made out of vinyl like that. Like they were substantial. Some kids would have. Um, I remember every year I'd always see a Tor Johnson mask around Halloween or the uh, Be Something Studios were really big they had like the shrunken head mask that was like a tiny little head and then just like tons of hair yep he <laughs> had enormous hair <laughs> i would see those all the time the, the skull mask was the same like that um they had oh i can't remember his name they had a mask that uh it was like it had like purple and blue like muscles but it was like a skull alien creature with like 
these teeth like this. I always forget the name. Not Fang Face, but it was something like that. But that was really big in the 80s, like circa 1985. And like, I'd see that every year. I mean, if you had a mask like that and you were a kid, you like you wore it every year, you know, yeah. the next, until you were done trick or treating, basically. <laughs> I'm sure your parents were like, I just paid $60 or whatever it was for that mask. They back weren't then. cheap back then, man. They and weren't they... even cheap back then. No, no, no. Because no, no, no. it was, it, you know, it would, I remember going to, like Woolworths and they had really nice ones there and you know they were forty five dollars in like nineteen eighty seven. Yeah, dude. So now that would be three hundred bucks. Yeah. You know? uh, my first my first expensive mask was the Distortion Studios Death Mask. It was the character was called Death. Mm -hmm. And it was basically like it looked like kind of like one of the ghouls from uh Michael Jackson's thriller. And it had hair, it was like green it had exposed skull and no nose and like a mouth that was open like that with hot glue drool pouring out of it mm -hmm. and had eyes because distortions was all about having the sculpted eyes in the mask that were painted and glossed mm -hmm. with uh with uh epoxy and um and i was like whoa i want that thing so bad and like you like you were saying about your grandpa my grandpa took me to this uh halloween uh, not a halloween it was a uh, a magic shop which mm -hmm. they don't have anymore either. It was called Ken's Magic Shop in Fairlawn, New Jersey. And it was so awesome. And they had their mask section was just like packed and it was great. And they had all the good masks and they had expensive masks. And I'd never seen like expensive, high quality masks like that. And um, and death was one of them. And like, I put, I put that on my list. Like, that's what I wanted this year for like my big gift. And it was probably like, $75 or $80 back then like it was a it was a big it was a big gift like that was my main thing and I got that when I was 10 um from my parents it was awesome I told uh I, I told the dude who runs distortions masks when I met him I was like that was my first mask and it was the coolest mask and he was like which one I was like death and he's like oh yeah death with the with the gray hair and the, the beard and the thing and I was like yeah he was like, yeah, that was a good setter or whatever. Yeah, I, I remember the first time I finally bought my first mask that I saved up for. And it was the uh, creep show mask, full head, the one that you went and it velcroed in the back and it came down to about here. It and was it Nate? Was, um, what? Nate the corpse from Father's yep. Day? I had that one and I used it for several years because I even went as Jason. So I wore a hockey mask yeah. over the rotted corpse. And uh, I w and to this day, I have no clue what ever happened to that mask. That's a shame. I, I, and, Those and, are great masks. People go, people go gaga for that mask, for that yeah. original Nate the Corpse mask. And it's no clue. I, don't, I, I had it when I, when I lived with my stepdad, so it wasn't like it got sold. And the only thing I can think of is that when I moved out for the first time, um, well, first time, the only time I, when I moved out with my parents' house, somewhere from point A to point B, it got put in storage or, you know, it got lost in a move or something, but I've never seen it again. Not yeah, that I, happens. Yeah. And they, you know, masks disintegrate. Mm -hmm. They just fall apart. They get sticky. They get weird. They crumble, you know. Oh, yeah. And then somebody's like, what is this piece of garbage? And they throw it out. You know? I had um I had a really good werewolf mask as a kid, and the the it just started ripping up the side, and you once it started deteriorating and falling apart, it sucked. Because I had the full werewolf costume, had the the uh custom made well made for me. So I had the 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 hair and then had the mask and the hair went up inside the mask. So Whoa. you know. And I had a the the torn shirt, so that the, the hair and there was tufts of hair coming out, and and awesome. uh, I had that wore that for Halloween. I don't know how many years too. And uh, I put the old aviator sunglasses one underneath the mask, so all you see was the chromey eyes looking back at you through. Yes. The mask. And uh, best story though was when I wore that costume uh, at friend's house. They were the last house on this road before you got to like a, uh, a state park area, like a, like not really, but um, so people would go back there and park and make out or whatever. And um, 
this is like a couple days after Halloween or stuff. And my, we had a party there and I'm like, I had my full costume and we saw the car drive by their house and it just, we didn't, we're waiting for it. It never came back. And I was like, Oh, we're messing with these people. So I'm in the full costume and I go, I come through the woods, pitch black middle of the night and the car's rocking and the windows are all steamed up. I run up and I jump and I land on the trunk of the car and I slam <laughs> up against the glass. The guy's on top of the girl. The girl looks at me, starts screaming. The guy has no clue what's going on. He thinks he's doing a great <laughs> he's job. He's doing a great job. Right. And the girl starts pushing him off, pushing him off. And the guy turns around and there I am slammed up against the glass. <laughs> And this dude goes over the seats because they're in the back seat. He right. goes over the seats and I drop off and I take off running, like loping into the woods and shit. And you can see the guy like getting out of his car, like looking around the girl screaming for him to get back in the car. And me and my <laughs> friends are sitting in the woods, just like trying not to laugh our asses off because we're all like yeah, trying to hold it in because we didn't want to give ourselves away. Because we're, we're They couldn't see us, but we could see them because the light, it was, it was so much fun. Just screw with them people, God. <laughs> Halloween, baby. Yeah. Um, oh, man. We've been at this for a while. Um, so, uh, before we, we keep going, uh, do you got any upcoming events coming up? Or do you do conventions or anything like that? I don't. Well, I'm starting to get back into doing conventions now. But not so much. I didn't do and I haven't done anything during COVID. It's just I'm not taking any chances. I have, I have parents... Who you know who can uh, who are you know if if they got infected it wouldn't be a good thing and if I want to see them I just don't go around people so luckily I have a very insular job where all I have to do is like go to the post office or go to the supermarket or go to my local smooth on to buy more latex so that's basically what I've been doing for like three years now because. I masked up early because I'm not taking any chances with diseases. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I was on lockdown before they made it mandatory. So, uh, but like this this year, I'm like, I've got my Omicron shot and I'm going to get out there a little bit more because I just feel like in order for the, for the business to progress, I have to meet more people. Every time you meet a person, that's like a new possibility that something something new can happen. Do you know what definitely, I mean? Definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just to, and to get my name out there more. Yeah, because the more people that see your mask, the more people see them in person. And, you you know, if you're at a convention, you can actually kind of like, you know, take a look at it and see how good it actually looks. And and uh, because, you know, you can look on the on the Internet and it looks really good. And then you see it. You if know. you're used to if you're used to people advertising and lying to you your whole life, you don't yeah. necessarily believe that it's that great. But yeah, my mess look good. If you see them up close, you're gonna know that it looks exactly the same in real life as it does in the videos that I make. You know, except for like whatever the special effects or whatever. But all I do to my mess is cut them out. You know, put them on a green screen and cut them out. I'm not doing any kind of photoshopping on them or 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 color enhancement other than to make it reflect what it actually looks like in person. Because, you know, sometimes the iPhones are a little weird and they'll like change the color if like the lighting is off or whatever. And these are very vivid colors that I'm working with. Yeah. And sometimes mm -hmm. black light colors and stuff like that. So I will like tweak stuff to make it look actually how it does if, if the camera like messes it all up and makes it look weird. Well, that's, I, I hate to say this, but you, that star killer mask, I didn't think that was a real mask at first when you posted it. I thought that was like, you know, I love it. <laughs> and I was like, that, that can't be a real mask, you know? And I was like, man, it's gotta be like a sculpt. Like, you know, you, you, you not, not a mask, but you know, like a, a maquette or what do you want to call it? That's the, right. No, it's a big it. mask. Like there's room for a head inside of it. But yeah. like, that's one of the things that I like to do is I've always ever, since I first started, like I go hard into the cavities and things to me that's what makes you know a mask like more realistic and cool especially a skull mask mm -hmm. is is if it really goes back super far so like there's a little bit of like you know illusion that's going on you know it's kind of a you know a trump not a trump lawyer thing but like yeah there's uh there it's not 100 percent anatomical or whatever yeah but yeah i just build the face out that much further so that i can go that much deeper back yeah, yeah, yeah.
because like I said, man, I'm sitting here looking at that picture. I'm like, and you, you listen, I'm like, it's a mask. I'm like, that, that's, 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 that's amazing. That's, <laughs> it's a big old mask. Is it now, is it just long in the front or is it just all around big? It's, I mean, it's big all over. You, I make them big so that they, so that they'll so stand up to recasting yeah. over the years. If I'm lucky enough to have these designs go on for 50 years, because every time you recast a mask or make a new master and then make a mask, because latex shrinks, they get mm. smaller over the generations. So a lot of times, like you know, in the 90s, if you bought a Don Post mask that originally came out in the 60s. Whereas it started out as this big mask, like now it's like this and it's barely wearable, if wearable at all, you know. Mm -hmm. So you start out really, really big in hopes that, you know, 50 years from now, it'll still be wearable or whatever. Yeah. That, that... And I, I kind of like a big, like a big mask on a rat rattling around on someone's on top of someone's body, you know, like around a little kid. They look hilarious with these huge bobblehead heads. Hands. Yeah. This, the kids were asking me, some of my friends' kids were like, why is it so big? I'm like, because it's dope. Because that's awesome. Because it makes it cool. But yeah, it's because, yeah, that's why. Uh, does it stick out in the front? Yeah, I mean, but it does. The whole thing is you have to, you know, you well, make it the hood. proportionate in a way. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's got to be. Yeah. So that you don't really notice, like, even if you look at, like, makeup in movies sometimes, from the side from the profile like if you really look at it critically with an anatomical eye you like mm -hmm. you realize that it's sticking out way too far yeah but you know from the front or from three quarters you don't see that at all yeah but yeah like, like i said it was it, it's it's an amazing piece uh, your stuff's great thank um, you so much it's 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 retro and current all at once it's there's a guy who's a tattooer who i just met online and he had a great term for that and i can't remember what it is but he was talking about the style of tattoos that he does where it's like hearkening back to a retro feel but it's but it's not pastiche it's still yeah. modern I don't, it was like neo neo retro i don't know it was something like that but well, yeah, like, that's that's basically what I am. I want to be like that old school feeling that you used to have, but done in a modern way. Oh yeah, that's you know using all the techniques and the knowledge accumulated now to make things cool and realistic or ultra fabulous, whatever that kind of thing, high quality. Oh yeah, because you know your your setup behind you. That's why I had to ask you if you if you grew up with the, those kiosks because that's what that reminds me of. I would love to have one of those kiosks to take the horror, to the horror conventions. That would be optimal. If I could just drive it like this, like the mask mobile, and then like you mm, flip the sides and you pull up, a button, and all the, the sides flap down, and it's just full of masks, and like yeah, yeah. Uh, how how when you do do conventions, man? How big is your display? I mean, you got to have a small, like, small. That's it. yeah. It's just like a table. With all the masks, I just have a stand, mask, 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 mask at this height, this height, and this height, like basically three rows, like that. No. I want to get, I mean, like, because I don't have a truck or anything, and I don't want to carry around those weird, like, uh, what do they call those product, like, display cage mm -hmm. things or whatever. I mean, I could if I got it, I guess, but then I'd have to get a truck or, a van, you know, whatever. If, when the business expands, then, you know, everything that comes with it. But right now, I'm, you know, doing it out of my hand. But... Now, do you ever get to, because uh, you said you haven't done do you ever get the Horror Hound or anything? Yes. You know how? I do Horror Hound. Uh, well, the first convention that I ever did, Mask Fest, was a part of the Horror Hound, Horror Hound convention. Uh, not the one in Cincinnati. It was the one in Indy, in Indianapolis. And, um, and uh, I'm hoping that this year they'll do it again around uh, August time because they took a few years off because of COVID and whatever. Um, and then Horror Hound started up again and I didn't do it because it's not really the right 
format like you're, people are there for like the, the stars you know what i mean and to buy like merch or whatever not necessarily to get masks but like if you're in a in a place where you know people are going because they know that the masks are there mm -hmm. that's kind of a different story than just tar hound which is like everything you know yeah. what i mean yeah so i'm hoping that mask fest gets it back together I want to do like whatever the monster palooza, all that baloney. The trans world is a big deal thing that I need to start doing all of those kinds of shows just to get myself out there. And so, because I know that there's like mass dudes who don't look at Facebook or Instagram. Do you know what I mean? They're busy doing whatever they're doing. They're mask blop. So they have no idea who I am. Yeah. But hey, I'm hoping this helps you out and gets you out there a little bit better. And and, it's uh, very nice of you to ask me on the show. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, I mean, this has been a blast. I was like, I didn't even realize how long we've been talking until I happened to look down the corner of the computer here, and I was like, holy shit. I have no idea what time it is. Uh, I'm stuck yeah. in, the, in the mask room. I'm hoping I didn't lock myself in here, because like when midnight strikes, all these guys, I'm pretty <laughs> sure, come to life. <laughs> then I'll be in trouble. <laughs> oh, man. I, I like I said, you, you do great work. Um, your stuff's so good, and like I said, it, it's so good that I didn't believe it was real. That, <laughs> That's a ringing endorsement. Yeah, I mean, I love that. I'm gonna put that on my march from now on. So, so good, Holy I didn't, says. I didn't. So, so good, I didn't believe it was real. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, so see, see, see now years down the road. My my character from my show will get popular enough that one day you'll make a mask out of what that character will look like. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'll do old you. Do, do, do grumpy ass old me with just all gray hair, bald. Uh <laughs> it's, it's already It'll be called hair. ancient, ancient horror host. Ancient old ass horror host. <laughs> old ass horror host. Um Oh man, but th that that's fun. That 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 is good. And like I said, I I appreciate you coming on. Um, um, do you you, you want to give us your information here at the end, like where we can find you and and where you're going to be and what you got coming up? Sure, you can always find me, Mikey Severe on Facebook. That's Mikey S E V I E R is how you spell it. Uh, same thing on Instagram. And if you search me, uh, my name on Google or on YouTube, everything will come up. So if you go to YouTube and search Mikey Severe, my spook show will come up. You can watch all my horror hosting movies. Uh, you can watch, I have a, a, a couple different shows on there. One where I do spooky stories. Another one where I teach you how to make masks. I've got two or three episodes of that. And uh, a bunch of other things, just like you can watch me painting masks really fast in the time lapse or sculpting in time lapse, all that stuff. And uh, my Instagram, Mikey Severe on Instagram is like, you know, I post something every day pretty much. So there's always there's always stuff happening. It's a lot of fun. Cool. And uh, I'm going to have to have you oh, on Oh, and oh, don't forget, if you want to buy a mask, go to www.spookshowmonstermasks.com. Com. Spook Show is the name of my monster mask company. Spook Show Monster Masks dot com. <laughs> so good you won't believe they're real. <laughs> so good you won't believe they're real. <laughs> That's going in all my promo stuff. There you go. From now on. And it's going in the press. Yeah. We're gonna have to have you back on again because I didn't even get to talk to you about your horror host and stuff. <laughs> I love it. Well, you know, we 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 shot the shit for a long time, so yeah, good yeah. for us. We yeah, did a good job. But it's 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 just a conversation, and I, I like it because people ask me, they're like, you know, what do you do? I was like, dude, I these are people that interest me, so I just talk to them. I was like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate what you do. I love that that you interview a lot of horror hosts, and you get you get it out there that there's so many of us working yeah. working on keep keeping the art form alive. Well, I've because it's a very strange bizarre little art form and the nice part about it is is that i've i've found this out there's there's a little bit but for the most part you know everybody's so like inviting they they just bring you right in and once you know you know i, I didn't think i would be 
you know, I got invited to Horror Hound last year for the Horror Host Hall of Fame or this year. And I was like, oh, dude, I'm, I'm, I host cartoons and, and, and stuff like that. And they're like, no, 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 no. You're now on the Monster Channel and stuff like that. He's like, come, come to the thing. And I'm like, okay. And then they're like, take the big picture. And I'm just standing there and they're like, you need to get up there. And I'm like, and I'm like, no, why would I get up there? And they're like, no, you're, you're part of this now. This is you. So really done. Might be so. When the owner lets you in. So, <laughs> really? No. No. What are you doing? All right. She, she's. I, I, I think. I think. I think she's not going to let me do anything now. But um. Yeah, we'll get you back on again. We'll talk about horror hosting and and talk about movies and whatnot and and have and have another two and a half hour conversation. <laughs> So, awesome. Yeah. Awesome, Paul Lee. It's been grand. Thank you so much for having me. Yep. So, all right. Take care, sir. And I will talk to you later, man. All right. Peace out so long. Yep. See ya. <laughs>